Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Shirley Povich Field in Bethesda, Maryland, where tonight we have the two best words in all of summer ball. Game three of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League LCS between your Bethesda Big Train and the Silver Spring Tacoma Thunderbolts. Big Train fell to the T-Bolts in game one of this series right here at Povich Field, 9-0 in game one and then we're able to come out on top in a heated contest last night at Montgomery Blair Stadium, winning by a score of 6-3. to three. So they force another game, extend their season, and somebody's going to walk away tonight as league champions. We are just about ready to get underway here in the first inning. Sean Salehi alongside Alex Drain will bring you the call live on Mixler, and we will add Periscope after the top of the first inning. Anthony Piccolino gets the start for Bethesda. One and one this regular season with a 1.89 ERA in 10 games of work. He started two games, so this isn't a unique situation for him. He comes set, kicks and delivers a swinging and a miss for strike one. Yeah, Anthony Piccolino was marvelous this season for the Bethesda Big Train. Sub two ERA, sub one whip in the regular season, and most importantly, he is a hot hand entering the postseason. The 0-1, fastball outside, taken for ball one. In his last three outings, he has not allowed a run, and that is a combined eight innings of action in those three start or those three appearances. One of them was a start. The 1-1 from Piccolino, swinging a foul back, leading off for the T-Bolts tonight is their left fielder, Corey Rogier. It'll be Brady Paree in the designated hitting role at second, and then Anthony Gallo due up third, He's the first baseman tonight. Time's called from Rogier as he didn't feel like he got a good step into the box. Most importantly for Piccolino, he's been good against the T-Bolts too this year. 1-2, breaking ball misses high and inside. That'll even the count. Three innings of work across two appearances against Silver Spring. Three innings, no runs, one hit, and he picked up a save. The 2-2, two -two. fastball outside. That'll run the count full. That close was that ball was close. Yeah, he thought he got the call or was going to get the call there. Started to walk over towards third, but now has to focus in on a full count delivery. James Madison Duke comes set. Now delivers the payoff pitch. Swinging a foul back. We'll keep dancing. Rogier led off last night's game and Silver Spring where he went one for five. Came all the way around to score. Also grounded into a double play. Here's the 3-2 once again. Fastball in the dirt. That's taken for ball four. So leadoff runner aboard for Silver Spring. It's a really nice walk for Rozier. Fell behind one and two. Battled and got back to a full count. Foul to pitch off and then draws a walk. That'll bring up Brady Paree who had a fantastic game yesterday. Highlighted by the two-run shot. In the fifth inning, that even the ball game up at the time, 3-0 after Bethesda had led up to that point. Bethesda would eventually pull away and come out 6-3 as a swing and a miss there on a high fastball, 0-1. Paree also a pitcher listed available in the bullpen for today's game. Runner on first, nobody out. Now he's heading over to second. No throw will be made from Thomas on a called strike, 0-2. Now the runner is in scoring position. Yeah, it was a really good jump. And against a lefty like Piccolino, I thought there was a chance he was going to see him taking off. But now an 0-2 count, you just need to get the strike out here. Rogier with the lead at second. The 0-2 swing and a foul back into the netting. Piccolino's had good command this whole season. Six walks in 19 innings, a pretty solid rate. He's getting ahead of these first two batters. The 0-2 as the runner's off to third swing, and that is a hot shot towards center field. Will Foster get there? No, it hops right in front of him, and now the runner's going to round third and come in to score on an RBI single for Brady Paree. Well, right there. That's something for Anthony Piccolino to work on because right now he is not doing anything to keep the runners on base. In both instances, Rozier got a gigantic jump. 
And he's going to have to clean that up. And quickly, one nothing here with nobody out in the first inning. So we're having somebody, I guess, sitting at the top of the dugout steps for the T-Bulls. Has to move back by the home plate umpire. Paris got some speed. He's got a decent lead at first. Pigolino looking over in his direction, and now the lefty will throw in that direction with a lollipop throw to keep him honest. Thomas is behind home plate again for the second straight game. He didn't have a great night with his arm either last night, so Big Train have struggled to replicate what Jacob Southern could do in terms of gunning out runners. First pitch high to Anthony Gallo, 1-0. Gallo last night at Montgomery Blair, pretty good night. Two for three with a hit by pitch. He came around to score after hitting a double in the fourth inning. If you're Piccolino, you just got to settle down. You've been getting ahead of the first two hitters, just didn't make the right pitches. 1-0 inside, called strike one. But he's had a good feel for his fastball so far. And, I mean, the hit he gave up was a blooper right in front of the center fielder that Foster may well have attempted a diving play if there was nobody on base. So, you know, it, it's soft contact right now. That one misses outside. Count moves to 2-1 and one now for Anthony Gallo. Galino delivers the 2-1, swing and a miss on a good high fastball. Gallo is such a big part of their lineup. You can get your first out and have it be to Gallo. That's a big confidence boost. A 2 2 to Gallo outside, taken for ball three. Count runs full. And the big trainer, a team that was so used to running on everybody and never having the threat of anyone running on them. Now the tables have turned in the postseason. Here's the 3 2 to Gallo. Swing and a hot shot. That one will get down for a fair ball base hit into the left field corner. Hamrock's going to have to scoop it up. Now rounding third and coming in to score is Brady Paree. Gallo will stop at second and another RBI base hit for the T Bolts. Makes it 2 0 early on here with still nobody out in the top of the first. You know, again, three batters. Piccolino has been in a two strike count for all three and he is just not finding the pitch that he wants. That one was harder hit, but it was still just sort of a looper that was placed well down the line. Right now, he's got a good feel for the fastball, but the off speed is flat, and out comes Sal to have a conversation. And we talk about the big train, and he's gonna take the ball from Piccolino right away. Yep, it's a short leash. And we talk about the big train starting Piccolino guy who wasn't an everyday starter in the regular season. The T-Bolts are without some of their best pitchers. This could be a very high scoring game. Absolutely. Should be a fun game three and quickly out now. That looks like Ryan Okuda. Well, it's interesting that they did not start Okuda in this game. We had heard before the game that he might not be available. Then he was listed as available on the lineup card. And they want to see Okuda give him four or five innings here. Okuda, the one that we all, the pitcher rather, we all expected to yeah. see start this game after Piccolino unable to record an out and allowing two runs, he'll have to come in relief. And he'll face Lucas Donlin in the on deck, or as the first batter up with Devon Griffin in the on deck circle. Okuda, I mean, he was dominant against the T Bolts. During the regular season, he made two starts against them, pitched 12 combined innings, 14 strikeouts, no runs, allowed a whip of just over a half in those outings. I mean, he was dominant. 
against that team, and he was dominant against pretty much everyone this whole season, except for the most recent appearance, which was in the playoffs against the Aces on Friday night. He looked a little shaky in that game, so it'll be interesting to see how he comes out. How does he look here in this outing? And again, he's got a really great hitter in the batter's box to face. Donlin, again, keeping up his impre impressive rather postseason run. Had an RBI last night as well as a couple of base hits. Two for five. Kuda looks back, runner on second, nobody out. First pitch delivered just low, ball one. Kuda comes set, now the 1-0 swing and a blooper that is going to fall right into the glove of the second baseman, Diaz, for out number one. Big, big out. Get him to pop up. You get Donlin out of the equation. Keep the runner at second. Now you can face Devon Griffin. Gallo, the runner at second. For those of you just joining us quickly, T-Bolt's getting in the ball game here tonight in game three. Corey Rogier, leadoff walk. He stole second and then on the run towards third was driven in with an RBI single by Brady Paree. And then the next at bat, Anthony Gallo hit an RBI double driving in Paree. So it's 2 nothing t bolts First pitch strike to Devon Griffin, the center fielder. Anthony Piccolino, after giving up those two runs, was yanked out of the game by Sal Colangelo. And now Ryan Okuda out of Virginia Tech is on the mound for big train. He looks in and is ready to deliver the 0-1. The pitch, swing, and a foul back, 0-2. And, and the good thing you like to see if you are a big train fan is that Okuda is picking up where his teammate Piccolino left off in terms of getting ahead of hitters. The issue for Piccolino was not the command. It was just he wasn't hitting the spots with his off-speed stuff. Okuda looks in. Now is set. The 0-2 to Griffin, swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. It actually got away from Thomas. We'll have to toss it over to Hunter, but he does so in time, two down. And that, you know, again, only two batters in, only <laughs> about five pitches into the outing for Ryan Okuda, but those first two batters were better at bats than really he had the entire game against the Aces on Friday night. He looks locked in right now. Well, we just went live on Periscope. If anybody would like to tune in to watch the game, and go to our Twitter, at GoBigTrain, to watch this pivotal game three. Here's the first pitch swing and a chopper over to the short side. It can't get grabbed by Keith Torres. That'll trickle into the outfield and allow the runner Gallo to round third and come home. Yikes. A, a grizzly guy, E6. A, a guy as sure-handed as Keith Torres. And, you know, I was about to think, I mean, the truth is, even if he bobbles that, as long as he keeps it in front of him, the run doesn't score. Absolutely. And he just lackadaisically stuck his glove out there, and it got past him. So now a 3 nothing game. That was Cole Freeze that hit that ball off the glove of Keith Torres. He has a lead at first. That ball spiked in by Okuda to Ian McMillan outside, 1-0. Oh. McMillan in last night's affair, 1-4, for four, grounded into a double play as well. The 1-0 oh, called strike on a good slider by Okuda. It would have been a tough play, and I'm not sure that Torres was going to make it at first base because it was deep in the hole, and Freeze, as we know, is a great runner. But again, you got to just keep it in the infield. Freeze bouncing around in the view of the lefty Okuda, who delivers the 1-0, or 1-1, check swing. He did not go around, says the first base umpire, 2-1. and one. Kuda looks in, now comes set. Kicks and delivers the 2-1 to McMillan. Swing and a hard shot over to Torres. It kind of gobbles him up. He throws over for the force at second and gets there in time. A risky play, but it's made 
in time for the final out of the inning. The big train will head to the bottom of the first, trailing three runs here in game three. Welcome back to Shirley Povich Field here in Bethesda, Maryland, as we are ready to begin the bottom of the first inning of this pivotal game three of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League LCS between your Bethesda Big Train and the Silver Spring Tacoma Thunderbolts. First pitch from the starter, Alex Mikett on the bump for the T-Bolts is a fastball high to Gio Diaz. We've seen Mikett before, and it hasn't been too good for him facing Bethesda. The 1-0 swing and a fly ball into center field. This is going to drop not in time as able to make a good charge on it was Devon Griffin for out number one. Yeah, there's a curious situation with Alex Mikett, and that is if you look at his stat line against the, uh, the D.C. Grays, he's been dominant. Ten scoreless innings this year, including five on Friday in a playoff win. Against everyone else on the Ripken League, 18 innings, 16 earned runs. That's an ERA of eight. And the Big Train were one of those teams that got to him. So, you know, it's tough to say who's going to show up tonight, why he's been so inconsistent. Here's Christian Jane, who will bat in the second spot today. It's Jane, then Cotto on deck. Going down the order, Matt Thomas hitting fourth, Drew Hamrock fifth. Tate Soderstrom as the designated hitter, hitting sixth. And then rounding out the order as that pitch misses outside to Jane, one and one. It is Keith Torres, the shortstop, hitting seventh. Darius Foster, the center fielder, hitting eighth. And Cade Hunter, the first baseman, hitting ninth. The 1-1 one -one from Mike. It's swing and a high fly ball into center field. Backtracking it just a little bit was Devon Griffin, but he gets under it no problem for out number two. Yeah, we've seen two nice swings. Good line drives out into the outfield, but right now they are just got a little too much under them, hanging up for the glove of Devon Griffin. 3-0, T-Bolts on top of Bethesda here early on in this ball game. Two of the runs came in to score with nobody out in the top of the inning. And Big Train are going to have to work from behind once again in this postseason if they want to walk away with their fourth consecutive piece of the Cal Ripken League title. Kobe Cotto stepping into the batter's box. He awaits the first pitch from Mike It. Fastball inside called strike one. Mike It finding the inside edge right there. He's at 6-4. 210. I mean, he's got a big, big frame. And really, when you look at his numbers, it hasn't been one particular thing. The 0 1 fastball swing and a foul back. It's not like he has a lot of walks or really a lot of hits. He just has a lot of both, or you know, a medium amount of both, you might say, to get that whip close to 1.6 in the regular season. Not a super high strikeout guy. Just a tad over nine per year. Nine innings. The 0-2. Breaking ball swing and another foul back. Just fighting it off was Kobe Cotto. Big train have not seen him in a long time, though. It's been since June 11th. He went two innings in that game, three runs. All of them earned five hits surrendered. Did get two strikeouts, though. The 0-2, fastball high, 1-2. One, one thing to talk about in the background of this game is the threat of potential rain. Yep, there's something we're going to be keeping an eye on all t night tonight. Mike hit sets and delivers the 1-2 to Cotto inside, taken for ball two. Matt Thomas waiting on deck, who... Up until last night, had a 13 at-bat on base streak. Got aboard 13 straight at-bats. Pretty impressive stuff. Two-two to Cotto. Breaking ball swing and another foul back. A good job by Kobe to just fight off a couple of breaking balls inside. Keep this at-bat alive. Two and two the count with two down. Pitch from Mike it outside. That's ball three. Count runs full. Swing and a grounder over to second. Ford scoops it up. Now flips it over to Gallo in time. 
for the final out of the inning. We'll head to the top of the second here at Povich. It's still 3-0. T-Bolt's on top of the big train when we come back. Welcome back to Shirley Povich Field here in beautiful Bethesda, Maryland. Rain's holding up so far. Hope to keep it that way through this ball game so we can finish and crown a champion here in 2019. Okuda back on the bump for Big Train and he faces Tyler Murray, the catcher, and delivers a first pitch fastball just outside for ball one. Tyler Murray started game one, then left after getting the backswing from, I believe it was Cade Hunter in that game late. The 1-0 skipped in the dirt outside, two balls, no strikes. He left in that eighth inning and was replaced by Luke Trainer, who started game two. And Tyler Murray's back out there behind the dish for the T-Bolts tonight. Yeah, and that's big. He's a great defensive catcher. Hasn't had a ton of success at the plate, though. 2-0 called strike on a good breaking ball tailing in the zone. If you're Ryan Okuda, this is exactly what you want. You know, come back out here. You had a great uh, first inning after coming into a tough situation. Get a quick frame and then send your offense back out. 2-1 outside, 3-1 and one the count. Murray and then Dominic Ford, 8-9-1 due up in this inning. A 3-1 offering from Ryan Okuda. Swing and a chopper to the left side. Gloved on the deep in the hole by Cotto. He'll throw across the diamond, but it gets away from the first baseman, Cade Hunter, and that one will get into foul territory and allow Trainer, or Murray rather, to advance 90 feet up to second. Well... You know, Kobe Cotto did a nice job. I mean, he did everything right on that ball until he just, you know, wildly yanked the throw. He backed up well, got the glove on it, and then just didn't make the delivery across the diamond. That's a costly error, moving a runner up to second just like that. Yep, it's an infield hit and then an E5 advancing a base. And Dominic Ford will come up with the second baseman for the first time tonight with nobody out and a runner in scoring position for the second straight inning. First pitch, swing, and a fly ball hooking foul out of play down the right field side. It's a scenario where you could see a potential bunt. Dominic Ford was not the best hitter of all time in the regular season. 0 for 8 so far in the playoffs. The 0 1 from Okuda, breaking ball, swing, and a fly ball into right field. Having to backtrack is Jane. Can he get there? He can. Makes the play on the run, and then a Crazy throw off his back foot to Keith Torres, keeps the runner at second. Well, Christian Jane's long strides bailed him out there because he took a wonky route to that ball, but was able to get there just in time. And also a big train got lucky because, you know, who else didn't read that ball well? Tyler Murray. Yeah. And then he slipped when he was trying to get back to the base as well. So one down, runner in scoring position still for Silver Spring as the order will flip over back to Corey Rogier. He walked and came around to score his first time up in the first inning. First pitch from Okuda in the dirt taken for ball one. Good block from Matt Thomas behind the plate. Keeps the runner at second. And this is a tough situation for Okuda and any pitcher, right? You're down in the game, and you know you just have to keep throwing scoreless innings to keep your team in the game. It's not like protecting in lead. It's not like a tie game. It it's a different mindset, but yet it's the approach is the same. The 1-0 swinging a foul back, 1-1. One one. You know, it's just like in football, the team is down. You have to put the defense on the field. You know, they have to create opportunities for your offense, get the ball back. In this same situation, you know, Okuda just has to create opportunities for the offense and give them the opportunity to hit when this game is still competitive. I mean, that was the issue in game one. Now, obviously, Big Train never ended up scoring, but we – kind of felt the game changed when yeah. it went from 3 nothing to 7 nothing. Absolutely. The feel, and it felt like the big train offense just lost its will. Momentum is real, especially in the sport of baseball. Rogier will step out and then step back into the box and await the 1-1 offering from Ryan Okuda. The pitch, fastball outside edge called strike two. Great pitch, outside edge. I mean, Okuda so far has looked really sharp, hitting all the spots, getting a big strikeout when he needed it. And the only two base runners aboard since he entered the game were on balls that the defense mishandled softly in the infield. Time is called from Rogier. He'll step out of the box after a long look in by Ryan Okuda. Okuda takes quite a bit between the pitches. He has a very 
methodical approach. Well, there's also longer signs being delivered with the runner behind Okuda yeah. at second. Okuda gets a pitch that he likes and now will deliver the one, two. Fastball inside, swung on, and that's an inside out swing trailing over to the left field, but a good play by the running Hamrock. He'll throw it back to second, but not in time to get Murray before he gets back safely. Two down. We say this every time that Drew Hamrock plays left field, but the speed of him is just a game changer. Yeah, he has been. Compared to the guys that we have seen otherwise. You know, off the bat, you're thinking if that is Matt Thomas or Christian Jane even, you, you, that, that could be trouble. And Hamrock is there <laughs> before without making it even a tough play. Yeah, that ball was in the gap. Yeah. Brady Paree will come back up. And an RBI single his first time up last inning. Driving in the first run of this ball game. First pitch, swing and a miss on a good ball in the dirt. An off balance swing there. Kuda real deceptive right now. Waiting on deck, Anthony Gallo, who hit an RBI double his last time up. Kuda's going to try to keep it so they don't have to face Gallo in this inning. The 0-1, breaking ball, called strike, bottom in the zone. That's yeah, a great pitch from Ryan Okuda again. He's just in command right now. We don't know how long he'll be allowed to go in this game, but I think Sal will let him go as long as the pitch limit or innings limit, whatever it is, allows. Counts 0-2 with two down here in the top of the second. The pitch, swing, and a chopper over to Kobe Cotto. He gloves it. He's going to have to make a tough play across the diamond, but does so in time, and it'll be three down here in the top of the second. Runner gets to second base on the error by Cotto, but he bails him out with a good play to close the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the second frame. Still 3-0 T-Bolts here at Povich Field. Back now for the bottom of the second inning here in game three of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League LCS between your Bethesda Big Train and the Silver Spring Tacoma Thunderbolts. Matt Thomas will get things started here in the bottom of the second. 3-0 T-Bolts on top after three runs issued against Anthony Piccolino. First pitch from Alex Mikett is a slider that dives outside, taken for ball one. Matt Thomas, this is his first time up to the plate tonight, had a good outing last night. 1-0, fastball right down the middle, taken for a strike. Well, in that first inning, Mikett had what I would describe as a clean and a quick inning. I wouldn't say it was a dominant inning. Big Train got some pretty hard hit balls to the outfield. They just didn't find holes. The 1-1 swing and a hard fly ball hooking foul out of play. One and two. Yeah, that curveball from Mike, it, he's got to be careful with it. Because that one hung up a little bit, but not enough. He's been hanging a lot of those tonight. Thomas will step back in after going three for five with an RBI last night in game two. The 1-2 pitch to Thomas outside in the dirt. That'll even the count. And Mike gets had good feel for his fastball. Not as much the off-speed stuff he's gotten away so far. Again, the big train just have to be patient. It's the second inning. Just have to chip away. I mean, this is a big train team that scores a lot of runs. They have to have that confidence. Ten a game against the T-Bolts in the regular season. The 2-2 two -two offering, swing and a foul back. That one right inside of Matt Thomas's kitchen. And, of course, the threat of rain is always going to be a factor tonight. We'll update you throughout the night. Mike, it comes set now, ready to deliver the 2-2. Breaking ball, swing, and a fly ball towards the gap in right center field. Backtracking it is the right fielder, Rogier, and he, a freeze rather, he makes the play on the warning track for out number one. Yeah, there you go again. That is another long out for the big train, and guess what it was? It was the curveball. That one hung up once again, and Thomas pounded it a long way to the edge of the track. Just not quite enough, but again, good contact right now. They just have to stay patient. Yep. Just didn't time it up right. If that was at a left field, that would have been crushed. Yeah, right? it was a little outside, so he kind of had to, to push it. First pitch to Drew Hamrock is outside the zone, 1-0. Hamrock, arguably the postseason MVP so far for big train is they have really enjoyed the see how the UVA Cavalier has performed following the regular season. Nearly hit for the cycle last night, went Single, triple, and a double, just a home run short, and he had hit two home runs in the last regular season matchup between these two teams. 
A 2-0 offering inside. 3-0 the count now for the Speedy Hamrock. Waiting on deck, Tate Soderstrom. 3-0 delivery. Ooh, that one ran inside and got a piece of Hamrock, and he will take first. That went off of Hamrock, then the catcher, and then maybe got a piece of the umpire. It was going to be ball four anyway. That at bat was just never close. Those pitches were way out of the zone, and Micah just now has to regroup and face the next hitter. Hamrock, obviously one of the fastest guys on the team. We could see him get in motion. I'm not sure I would necessarily, but if he wants to try it, we saw the arm of Murray a couple of nights ago. But I also felt in those ones they didn't always get the best jump. Nope, and you have to remember those pitches were also skipped yeah. in the dirt, allowing Murray to pretty much pick it up and run into the throw. Yeah, he definitely got great pitches to, to throw on. Hamrock with a pretty decent lead at first. First pitch to Soderstrom inside, fastball, 1-0. and Yeah, my kid is just wild right now, overthrowing for the most part. And this is going to be the issue for... The T-Bolts is they ran two guys into the ground yesterday. Neither Gongola nor Reddick will be available to throw over to first by Mikeit not in time. In addition to Charleston on Monday, yep, he's not listed as available either. Our thought is that it'll probably be Braden Kale first out of the pen. Yeah. Taylor Dybal obviously the closer, but outside of that it gets a little hairy. We saw Brady Perry, maybe Ryan Miles, maybe Greg Albert, Lyle Miller Green an option. The 1-0, breaking ball up high, 2-0. And, and you have to imagine that things are starting to get into the head of Alex Mikett right now. Every time that Tyler Murray receives a pitch, he stands up looking to throw over to first. So that makes Mikett the righty who's not looking over to first at all, aware that Hamrock is bouncing around on the base pass. There's the 2-0 fastball on the outside edge called strike one. Yeah, first strike since Thomas flew out to right field. This has been... A lot of balls in a row, finally able to come back on the outside edge with the fastball. Pretty great crowd here at Povich as we have a full section down each dugout and then some extra seating in the additional bleachers down the right field side. Well, the weather radar, Northern Virginia's getting pounded. Yeah, I've been, I've been told from family members. <laughs> 2-1 and no pitch as that throw over to first. Not in time for the speedy Hamrock. Soderstrom, his last at bat last night was in the seventh inning where he got hit in the shoulder. We thought it was the head, but it was in fact the shoulder then skipped up and went off his helmet. The 2-1 swing and a ball poked foul down the left field line, 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, we were not at the best angle to see that. Yeah, well, you could hear it ring off the helmet, so that's why you know we went to the conclusion that it went off of his head, but the way that he reacted, not dropping to the ground immediately in a really bad way, kind of gave the clue that perhaps it didn't hit him directly, but he exited the game and was pinch ran for by Fox Simones as that 2-2 two -two pitch is a fastball outside, taken for ball three, count runs full. You know, that's a ball, but it's a pretty good pitch for Mike because it's just outside the plate. Oh, it's tempting. So, yeah, so if Soderstrom swings there, it's a strike three for sure. And in a 2-2 count, you can afford to waste a pitch. It's been a good at-bat from Tate so far. It's the throw over to first, not in time. Sam Hamrock has been getting dirty over there. Mike has got a pretty decent pickoff move. The issue is he's so big that it just it isn't quite as agile in terms of spinning around. Hamrock's got a great lead. You'd imagine he moves here with the 3-2 count. No, he doesn't. Swing and a fly ball into shallow left center. Coming on is the left fielder, Rogier, and he'll make the play for out number two. It's now the fourth fly out in six at-bats for the big train against the pitcher, Mike. Had everything in the air right now, getting in a lot of lengthy at-bats over the last few yet to make that great contact. So now Keith Torres comes up to the plate. Shortstop out of Sacramento State had an error Earlier in this ball game, that ended up driving in a run to make this 3-0. T-Bolts on top. Try to make up for it with a big hit here with two down in the bottom of the second. First pitch, ooh, that one runs outside of Murray and gets away from him after going off the backstop. He'll pick it up, and Hamrock able to cleanly move up to second. Curveball still got nothing right now for Alex Mikett. He's not hitting the spot anywhere. Sometimes it's too high, sometimes it's hanging that time it was just way outside. Well, we've mentioned 
in terms of numbers, not a lot of great options left for no. Silver Spring, and nobody's working in the bullpen right now. They're going to ride Mike it with two outs, try to see if he can just get out of this inning. Well, he's at 30 pitches right now. We think he could probably go close to 80. Well, it's the final game of the season. You're going to throw everything you have. So that pitch is a good strike on the outside edge, one and one. Well, with Hamrock at second now, if Torres just gets a single out of the infield, it's a 3-1 game most likely. Yeah, more likely than not is... They're not really holding the runner, Hamrock. Actually, now Ford, the second baseman, starting to creep over towards the bag. Well, two outs, you're going on contact. The 1-1, one, one, that one tails outside, but a great block by Murray. Keeps it from hitting the backstop and allowing Hamrock to advance once again on a wild pitch. 2-1 and one the count for Keith Torres. Two down in the bottom of the second. Still no runs for Bethesda. Three for Silver Spring. Mike it looks back at Hamrock. Now delivers the 2-1 to Torres. Ooh, that one inside nearly got a piece of the shortstop. He ducks out of the way, 3-1. and one. He's still been overthrowing that fastball. He's just putting too much on it, and it's just wild. Well, it's got great zip, just yeah. no command. Sometimes for your own sake, you just have to scale back a little bit. Count 3-1 and one now for the speedy Keith Torres. Mike it delivers the pitch. That one high and inside. And it was a balk. It was a balk. Yeah. Second base or third base umpire standing behind Alex Mikett by the second base bag ruled it a balk. Jerry Pitch Park was all over it. Pitch doesn't count. Still 3-1, but the runner advances 90 feet. Well, now you're in wild pitch territory. To Absolutely. Score a run, and we've seen some wildness in this inning. Mikett comes set. Now delivers the 3-1 to Torres. Taken up high. Ball four. Runners are on the corners with two down for... Darius Foster. Well, if he's facing Tate Soderstrom or, to enforce the point, Jake Heilman, that's a strike. But you get a 5'7", 5'8", guy in Keith Torres. The strike zone shrinks, and that's a ball. And yeah, I wish we, on the corners. I wish we got a picture of Jake Heilman and Keith Torres standing yeah. next to each other. That would have been a good time. Kelly Jenkins might actually be. I think she's shorter than. She is shorter. So than then, yeah, that would be definitely the shortest and the tallest players in the Cal Ripken League. That would have been a f good photo. Runners on the corners would not be shocked to see a potential double steal attempt yep. here. Two of the faster guys on the big train roster standing on the base paths. Tyler Murray's got a great arm, though, behind the dish. First pitch from Mike it to Foster. Inside, that might have gotten a piece of him. I don't think it did. No sign from Foster that that did, and it's just 1-0. and Might have bounced into him. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking happened. Which in softball is a hit-by-pitch. Huh. In baseball, it is not. Mike it's still overthrowing all of his pitches here. And then there's just no command on the curveball. Foster, we've seen, has some pop. Three home runs in the regular season. I'd love to tie this ball game up with one swing. Check swing on a fastball outside, 2-0. Oh. Well, what you've got going on now is the strike zone of Dave Snyder is shrinking because just not getting the benefit of the doubt is Mike it. When you throw a ton of balls in a row, you're not going to get borderline calls anymore. Count 2-0. and oh. Torres with a good lead at first. 2-0 inside, called strike one. Thirty-seven pitches now for Mike. And we have somebody doing some stretching in the bullpen for Silver Spring. Throw over to first, not in time. You got to be careful on pickoffs to first. If you have anything that perhaps either takes too much time or gets away from the first baseman, Hamrock easily scores from third. 2-1 as Torres is bouncing around the base path. That is a called strike on the outside edge. That one was spacious. Oh, uh, I mean, it was pretty much the same pitch that was a ball in uh, the second pitch of this at-bat. Now it's a strike, 2-2. Two and two. have to protect the zone. Count even at two apiece for Darius Foster with two down. 2-2 two, two pitch outside, taken for ball three. Count runs full. Kate Hunter on deck. It's a very hazy atmosphere right now above the field. Perfect for Periscope. No glare tonight. Nope. A lot of clouds everywhere. A 3-2 pitch. Swing and a high pop-up. Over the third baseman, Donlin, he will make the catch just outside the infield dirt. 
for the final out of the inning. So Bethesda is able to once again put runners on in this series but not drive them home. It's still 3-0. T-Bolt's on top as we head to the third. Back now for the top of the third inning here in game three of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League LCS between the Big Train and the Thunderbolts. Anthony Gallo will get things started here in the top of this inning against Ryan Okuda back out for his third inning of work. So that pitch misses just outside and low. Want to know the count. Gallo with an RBI double his first time up. Made, that a, made this a 2-0 ball game. 1-0, swing and a miss. Big hack by oh, Gallo. Kuda has faced eight batters now since being inserted into the game. A weak infield single and an error, and then an, another error. Those are the two results. Otherwise, he's been real good. 1-1, one, one breaking ball, misses just low, 2-1. Waiting on deck is Lucas Donlin. 2-1 to Gallo, swing and a hot shot that hooks just foul over the third base bag, 2-2. Two and two. Pretty similar ball to the one he hit for the double back in the first inning. That one from Piccolino had just hung up a little bit more than Okuda's delivery there. Yep, tucked it into the left field corner. It wasn't very hard hit either, it was just well deposited. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Gallo. Breaking ball outside and low. That'll run the count full, three and two. Payoff pitch from Okuda. Fastball swing and a soft chopper over to third. Cato picks it up now, throws across the diamond in time for out number one. It's a great extension from Cade Hunter there. He is making sacrifices to be at this game. His parents had to cancel his freshman orientation at Virginia Tech, his mother rather exasperated about him needing to pick classes sometime, <laughs> but he is here for this game. Team first guy, I love it. Gallo retired for the first out. That'll bring up Donlin, who's 0 for 1. He swings and hooks that one foul down the third baseline, 0 and 1. Oh, one from Okuda, swing and a hard hit ball into straightaway center. That'll go straight to the center fielder, Foster, who will glove it easily for out number two. That's what you'd like, quick inning. You get two outs right now. Okuda only at 34 pitches right now. And they've held Lucas Donlin scoreless so far in his first two at-bats. That's huge, considering he's one of the best bats in this T-Bolts lineup. Devon Griffin struck out swinging his first time up. He takes a ball outside there from Okuda, 1-0. Donlin this postseason hitting 4.66. 1-0, swing and a foul back, 1-1. One one. Brewster's got a pretty good line going. We got a couple of patrons over there by the... I had the cinnamon sugar pretzels from Auntie Anne's. Always a good move. Pretzel wheel getting some young boys to partake in that activity. That ball skips away from Thomas, low and outside, two and one. The pretzel wheel is not made of pretzels. It is not, this is, this like is worth wheel, noting. It's like the Wheel of Fortune wheel, and yeah. you spin it to see if you win a coupon. Well, it's more like the Price is Right wheel, because the Wheel of Fortune one is laid down, yes, the Price is Right. That's fair. Actually, no, the Price is Right, that's even worse, because yeah. that's like. Isn't that what you like to yeah, call it? Yeah, yeah, the two one inside and low, three and one. I don't think anyone really watches the Price is Right. <laughs> Mostly like. Pets whose owners left it on on TV when they went to work. That's about it. Wow. <laughs> the 3-1. Swing and a foul back, 3-2. and two. Wasn't it Bob Barker? Wasn't that the name of the... Yeah, well, Drew Carey hosts it now. Well, Drew Carey hosts it now, but I think Bob Barker was like... if I'm probably mistaken on the name, but... You'll probably find a thousand reruns of it on the Game Show <laughs> Network at 2 a.m. Here's the payoff pitch from Okuda. Swing and a ground ball. Hot shot off the glove of Kobe Kato. That's a fair ball and will allow Devon Griffin to reach first safely. That would have so, been a tough play. I think it's going to be ruled an infield hit. That's what I would rule it. I mean, Kobe at the very least did what he had to do, which was he did get the glove on it and yep. kept it from running all the way down the line. And, you know, two out single, that's okay. Just get this last out from Cole Freeze and 
send the offense back out there in the bottom of the third. Freeze reached on an error his last time up, and that drove in Gallo from second to make this a 3-0 ball game. Runner on first, two down. So the ice cream truck is now surrounding Povich Field. The first pitch is a strike to Griffin, 0-1, or Freeze, rather, 0-1. Oh, there it comes. Yeah, it's coming right down the access road. He's got to watch out for some foul balls. The 0-1, that one skips in the dirt and through the legs of Thomas. That will allow Griffin to advance 90 feet to second. One and one the count. It would have been a wild, it'll be a wild pitch, but Thomas really should have been able to knock that one down. It's a pretty bold move from the ice cream man because nobody that nobody's allowed to leave the stadium and then come back in <laughs> for free. <laughs> so I don't know what patrons he's expecting to get tonight. Maybe he could sell it through the chain link fence. That's that sounds illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the one one offering, and that's a fastball right down Broadway, one and two. Yep, good pitch. A lot of run on it, the outside edge. Now you're ahead one and two. Get the strikeout and then get out of the frame. Third straight inning where the T-Bolts have a runner in scoring position. Griffin with the lead at second. Kuda comes set, now delivers the 1-2 to freeze. Inside, that one gets away a little bit from Thomas, but he's able to keep it in front of him, heading towards the third base bag. That keeps Griffin at second. 2-2 two and two the count now for Cole Freeze. Kuda's trying to get as far tonight, just about. Actually, no, it would be as far tonight as he got in that first game against Alexandria, three innings. Here's the 2-2 pitch swing and a high pop-up. That one will tail out of play and head towards the parking lot. Here's the 2-2 from Okuda, high and outside. That'll run the count full for another batter. They've been doing that well all series against this big train pitching staff. Getting long at bats, forcing the pitch count to ride up. Payoff pitch with two away. So Okuda looks in, now looks back at Griffin before kicking and delivering. Swing and a hot shot into center field. This one will go straight to Darius Foster. He'll make the play for out number three. But once again, the T-Bolts are able to get a runner into scoring position, but for the second straight inning, they can't do anything with that runner. Still 3-0. T-Bolts on top here in game three of the LCS in 2019. Back now for the bottom of the third inning is the first pitch from Mike. It is outside to Cade Hunter. He will get his first at bat in this ball game. This is going to be 9-1-2 due up here in the top of the bottom of the third as that is a ground ball straight to Anthony Galloway. First for out number one. Well now it's one time through the order. Everybody, the big train has gotten a look at Alex Mikett. Now how does the uh, change the, the approach change the second time through. Mike had entered this inning at 40 pitches after a lengthy second inning. That was a nice and quick out for him, though. First pitch, swing, and a ground ball right up the middle. Glad will be gloved by McMillan. He'll flip it over to Gallo. A nice extension, able to make the play in time for out number two. Quickly two down here in the bottom of the third. You see Diaz there getting another decent pitch to hit. He's just, you know, right now for him, getting good contact on it. If it's five feet to the right, it's a single, but instead, you know, he puts it right at the shortstop. This will bring on Christian Jane, who flew out to center his first time up. Two down quickly here in the bottom of the third of a game that is flying by here in Bethesda, Maryland. First pitch to Jane inside, runs just over the shoe tops and out of the glove of Murray, 1-0. Rojo Prairie walking towards the concession stand. 1-0 delivery to Jane. That's a fastball just low, 2-0. Mike it now at 
45 pitches. 2-0 outside, ball three. It's now 25 balls to 21 strikes for Alex Mikett. The 3-0 to Christian Jane, fastball inside, ball four. It's the second time tonight we've seen Alex Mikett command to be good and then all of a sudden in one at bat it just totally vanishes and he issues a four pitch walk. And he's thrown more balls than strikes. Well it was two down in the second and the big train were able to threaten with a runner on second or rather runners on the corners with Drew Hamrock and Keith Torres, but nobody able to come home. Still 3-0 as Kobe Cotto will come up to the plate. He grounded to second his first time up and takes that pitch for a strike. Jane with the lead at first. Still no hits for Bethesda in this ball game. The 0-1 swing and a hard hit ball into right field. Backtracking it is Freeze. That one will be gloved by the warning track. Fantastic grab by the right fielder for Silver Spring. And quickly we are through three here at Shirley Povich Field. Still 3-0 T-Bolts as we head to the top of the fourth. Back now for the top of the fourth inning at Shirley Povich Field as the sun is starting to peek out a little bit. It's already set here at just about eight o'clock local time, but it's orange glow is starting to peek out over the right field trees. Ryan Okuda will come back out for another inning of work. He came in relief for Anthony Piccolino who started this ball game and wasn't able to record a single out and allowed two runs to score and then was charged a third run leaving Anthony Gallo on base. will be 7-8-9 due up here in the bottom, or rather the top of the fourth inning. Ian McMillan will step up to the plate first. He grounded out to Keith Torres, the all opposing shortstop, his last time up in the first. First pitch to McMillan is just low and outside, 1-0. and -oh. 1-0 outside, taken for ball two. McMillan this postseason, three for 10, batting solid 300 with four RBIs. 2-0 swing and a high fly ball into left field. Coming under it is Hamrock. And he will make the grab for out number one. That'll bring up Tyler Murray who reached on an E5 in the top of the second inning. Actually, he singled my apologies and then was advanced it's a second on an error by it, Kobe Cotto. It was a very, I think it was a generous hit, to be honest, but go either way. Yeah, either way. First pitch to Murray in the dirt, taken for ball one. This is a unique sunset tonight. Yeah. I'm going to go with pineapple. Yeah, First time we've had a, a, a yellowish hue all season. A 1-0. That's a good curveball breaking in the zone, one and one. Saved the best for last. <laughs> Gotta go tropical. <laughs> so we have just a couple more weeks left of summer. Or it's back to school for everybody. The 1-1 one, one swing and a hot shot gloved by Kobe Cotto. He spins around, now throws it over to Tom, or Hunter rather at first and in time for out number two. Oh, that was a fine play. Beautiful so extension. Slick. All in one motion. Cotto wasn't going to mess up again against Tyler Murray. And quickly two down here in the top of the fourth inning. Dominic Ford up to the plate. He flew out to right his last time up. 
First pitch from Okuda, swing and a miss. Just getting a touch off of it. Good change up. Kuda, the Virginia Tech Hokie, looks in and now delivers the 0-1. Outside, taken for ball one. That'll even the count. Three runs on four hits, no errors for Silver Spring. No runs, no hits with two errors for Bethesda. The 1-1 swing and a fly ball into right field. Coming under it is Christian Jane, and he will make the play for out number three. So one, two, three, down go the T-Bolts for the first time in this ball game, and we will head to the bottom of the fourth. Still 3-0. Big Train trying to crawl back in game three of the LCS. Back now for the bottom of the fourth inning here at Shirley Povich Field in game three of a three-game series to decide the Cal Ripken League 2019 champion. It'll be Matt Thomas, Drew Hamrock, and Tate Soderstrom due up in the 4-5-6 spots for Bethesda, still trailing 3-0 to Silver Spring. Alex might get back out for a fourth inning of work. First pitch curveball drops in the zone 0-1. Those of you just joining us, it was a... Two run top of the first that scored, actually three run top of the first rather, for Silver Spring that gave them the early three nothing advantage. That breaking ball inside edge called strike. Matt Thomas wasn't pleased with the call. He's quickly in the 0-2 hole. We are broadcasting this game live on Periscope as well. You can go to our Twitter account at GoBigTrain to tune in and watch tonight's action. Here's the 0-2 for Mike at fastball outside taken for ball one. If you're not already listening, you're missing out. <laughs> or you're already watching, rather. Our good friend uh, Rich in the press box said he was watching both last night. Yeah, because he said he muted the periscope and turned on Mixler as that curveball breaks low and away, two and two. Appreciate you guys tuning in all season long. It's been a pleasure broadcasting Big Train Baseball to you guys this entire 2019 season, and Big Train will be looking to close out the season nicely with their fourth consecutive championship, but they need to come back in this ball game trailing three nothing. That pitch outside from Mike hit three and two the count for Matt Thomas. The payoff pitch from Mike hit fastball outside just by a hair, ball four. That's borderline call and big train get him perhaps a break there. I don't know, you can go either way. Yep. So that'll bring up Drew Hamrock. He was hit by a pitch on a 3-0 count his last time up and was able to advance all the way to third after a wild pitch and a balk. Hamrock steps in. Swings and misses at a good inside fastball 0-1. Thomas, not much of a threat to steal, and down three runs, you just need base runners. 0-1 oh, outside, just low, actually. 1-1. One and one. It's a big train chance, or starting to get going here at Shirley Pova, trying to rile this team up for a rally. The 1-1 one called one strike. That one looked a little bit high, but it'll be 1-2 and two for Drew Hamrock. Still hitless are the big train against Alex Mikett. So there is somebody warming up in the bullpen down the right field side for Silver Spring. Righty Mikett delivers the one two, swing and a miss that ball in the dirt, but. That was maybe the first good curveball we've seen all game from Mikett, and that one had a lot of zip on it. Got down and away there. First strikeout for Alex Mikett this evening. One down for Tate Soderstrom with a runner on first. He flew out to left his last time up. Waiting on deck is Keith Torres. First pitch from Mike it low and inside, ball one. 
Well, the big train still don't have a hit in this game. They've had a handful of base runners because of walks and hit by pitches, but they're just going to need somebody to come up big and make contact. Yep, you don't want a repeat of game one of this series where Big Train just never could get the bats going. The 1-0 swing, and that is a grounder towards the hole, but scooped up by McMillan. He'll flip it over to second in time for the force, but no relay throw, so it'll just be Thomas that is retired heading into second. Tate Soderstrom reaches first on the fielder's choice. That was a really nice play by both McMillan and Ford, Ford especially to keep that foot on the base. I didn't think he was going to. I mean, the Silver Spring T-Bowl defense this series has been phenomenal. Absolutely. Every single night. Especially in the outfield. Yep. With Rogier and Cole Freeze making several spectacular defensive plays. Keith Torres steps in. The runner on first and now two down. First pitch from Mike it low and outside. Fastball 1-0. Mike it gets the sign from his catcher, Murray, and comes set, now delivering the 1-0 check swing, and it's a called strike from Dave Schneider. 1-1. One one. The 1-1 one one pitch, outside edge, called strike two. Slider tailing away from the righty, Torres. One and two the count, two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Mike it looks in, gets the sign from Tyler Murray, now comes set. Here's the one, two, fastball inside yep. edge, called strike three, and that will retire the side. Big train still held hitless, but a couple of base runners in this inning, still nobody coming home. Still three nothing, T-Bolts as we head to the top of the fifth. Corey Rogier now starting this inning. Top of the fifth, as that's a beautiful breaking ball from Ryan Okuda, dropping in the zone 0-1. And, Okuda working his fourth inning, or fifth inning rather, is a check swing there. Did he go around? Yes, says the third base umpire, 0-2. Oh for one with a walk and a run scored here tonight. Had a board and came around to open up this ball game in the top of the first. Kuda kicks and delivers the 0-2. That one skips outside, one and two. One two offering fastball just low. Two and two. That evens the count. Kuda now at 61 pitches so far in his outing tonight. Two two. Swing and a chopper that hooks foul down the first base side. I mean, if, that, if he doesn't swing there, that might have hit him. I mean, it was, it was close. He was at his feet. Yeah, it was inside, that's for sure. Nobody up in the T-Bolts bullpen. It'd be interesting to see as somebody was warming up earlier if they have a pitching change heading into the bottom of the fifth. And we're having a first base umpire retrieve a baseball that I guess was either not, a, not picked up earlier in the ball game or just got away from a fan playing catch behind the grandstand. It, sitting in the foul territory down the right field side. Now resume play. Here's the 2-2 from Okuda. Cold strike three on the outside edge. Backwards K gets this inning underway. I mean, just a perfect spot from Ryan Okuda there. Now at 63 pitches. Make it two strikeouts for Ryan Okuda.
Brady Paris stepping into the batter's box. He's one for two. Takes that pitch for a strike low in the zone, 0 and 1. Big Train have pretty much their entire bullpen available tonight, and they might need to use some of their best hitters. Not hitters, but best guys, best arms. 1-1 one, one misses just, or 0-1 oh, misses low, 1-1 one one the count. That pitch misses inside, 2-1. and one. For Brady Perry, who has an RBI single under his belt tonight. That breaking ball drops into the zone right down the middle, 2-2. Two and two. Perry comes set and digs in. Now Okuda delivers the 2-2. Called strike three on the outside edge. Back to back, backwards, K's two down. Yeah, Perry knew it. Right on the outside edge, and Okuda is feeling it. He'd love to see him get through this and potentially give you one more in the six if he can, if he's under the pitch limit, whatever it is. This will bring up Anthony Gallo. First baseman, one for two tonight with an RBI double his first time up. He came around to score. First pitch, high and outside, taken for ball one. A 1-0 swing and a high pop-up. This one's hooking out of play. And, ooh, that one goes off. It sounds like the roof of the pavilion, and indeed it's rolling off, and that's going to be a mob of young kids trying to get that baseball, and one of them does come up with the rock. Counts one and one for Gallo. Kuda licks in. Now the lefty delivers. Swing and a miss. Big cut by Gallo on a breaking ball in the dirt. One and two, two down here in the top of the fifth. Three nothing, still the score. T bolts over the big train. One, two pitch. Check swing, did he go? No, says the first base umpire. Well, the good news is looking at the radar, it seems like the rain is pretty much past us. Knock on wood. Zoom out, is there anything far west? Yeah. I mean, oh wow, there, yeah, there we go. However, it is worth noting sometimes things just kind of spawn. Yeah. I'm not a meteorologist, but mm, neither neither of us are. <laughs> Counts two and two. Okuda comes set, kicks and delivers the two two to Gallo. That one skips away inside, just over the shoe tops of Anthony Gallo. Three and two. Count runs full with two down. Gallo, a junior at Lehigh from Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Facing off against another Pennsylvania native, Ryan Okuda. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Three straight strikeouts. Striking out the side. Ryan Okuda will head over to the third base dugout. Still preserving a three-run deficit. Heading into the bottom of the fifth. Big Train need to get the bats going. They'll look to do that when we come back. Back now for the bottom of the fifth inning here in game three of the LCS of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League. Big train trail, three nothing to the Silver Spring Tacoma Thunderbolts. Alex Mikett has done well. Four no hit innings against the best offense in this league. Delivers a first pitch strike to Darius Foster. It'll be Foster, Hunter, and then Diaz. It'll be eight, nine, one spots due up in this inning for Bethesda. The 0-1 delivery from the righty Mikett. There's a breaking ball that drops in high in the zone, 0-2. Oh yeah, that hasn't been a strike most of today, but he gets one there. Mike, it looks in, and the righty's ready to deliver to the lefty Foster, the 0-2. Swing and a ground foul. Right over by the T-bolt dugout there. Count stays at 0-2. The 0-2, swing and a miss on a good fastball outside. Yeah, chased it on the outer edge. It's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Alex Mikett. He's now up to three in this ball game. Yeah, three of his last four batters faced have ended in strikeouts. Cade Hunter will come up to the plate. He grounded to first his first time up. That was in the third inning. Still facing the same score here in the bottom of the fifth, 3-0. 
Breaking ball drops in the zone, strike one. Mike it finding more control over his pitches as this game has gone on. That 70 right now, probably his last inning. Nobody working in the T-Bolts bullpen. The 0-1 outside edge called yeah. strike. Hitting the spots right now. Counts 0-2 for Cade Hunter. Smike it winds and delivers. Swing and a fly ball into left field. This one's very shallow and coming on and making the play is Corey Rogier for out number two. <laughs> Top of the order now will be up for the big train. It's Gio Diaz stepping up to the plate with two down here in the bottom of the fifth. Still looking for the first base hit for Bethesda. First pitch from Mike Kidd is a called strike. 0-1. He, he's definitely gotten some more favorable calls on the edges, but again, that's if you start throwing strikes, you're going to start to get those calls. Absolutely. 0-1, that one's outside edge, called strike two. Gio didn't like the call. <laughs> Gio is not happy right now. I'll have to dig back in and face the 0-2 hole. And you're in protection mode right now. Gio digs in, and the righty out of St. Mary's awaits the 0-2 offering. Fastball outside, taken for ball one. Here's the one two from Mike at breaking ball swing and that is a ground ball straight to the middle. Now McMillan picks it up in a beautiful flip to first. Great extension yeah, by Gallo. The no breaks. Defense is plugged in right now. No breaks for Bethesda as that will retire the side. We head to the top of the sixth inning. Still three nothing T-Bolts here at Povich Field when we come back. Welcome back now to Shirley Povich Field for the top of the sixth inning in the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League Championship game. Game three of a series that is currently tied at one apiece. But in this game, it is the Silver Spring T-Bolts leading the big train 3-0. Bethesda still no hit through five innings against Alex Mike at the T-Bolts. Did all their damage in the first against Anthony Piccolino. And Ryan Okuda came in. He's been great since then, but they just still... Offense has not been able to pick him up, but Okuda's going to have to continue to work here in the sixth. First pitch is a ball. Second one is swung on and missed there by the leadoff hitter, Lucas Donlin. Just in front of the 8.30 mark, this game is going very quickly. Yep. Big train hope to slow it down. 1-1 one, one on the way. That's a little outside, 2-1. and one. Donlin, then Devon Griffin, then Cole Freeze. Just swinging a ground ball over to short. Backhanded by Torres. Throw across the body, and it's in time for the out. Good extension from Cade Hunter at first to make the grab. The ball was a little bit down the first base line towards the runner. He had to kind of poke out in front of the running Donlin to make the grab. So that'll bring up Devon Griffin. First pitch shows bunt, gonna lay it down, but it'll go foul down the third base side. Ryan Okuda now, eight straight retired. If you go back before that, 15 of, or 13 of 14. In a groove at the moment, and he's going to need to continue to be to keep his team in this game. There's a called strike on the outer edge, 0-2. The windup, the 0-2, swing and a tapper over to first base. This is an easy play for Cade Hunter. He'll just flip to Okuda, and they do get the out. That was a close play. And they made it harder than it needed to be. Now Hunter probably, in theory, could have just taken the play all by himself. Yeah, if he charges it and just taps the bag, I think it's an easy out. That'll bring up Cole Freeze. Cole. 
phrase tonight. Reached on an E6 and then lined out to center field. That was a costly E6 by Keith Torres. That brought home a run from third. First pitch is inside. Train were able to get this game in around the rain. Pitch down and in 2-0, and oh, and in theory it is now an official game. Yeah, they need to pray rain doesn't ever show up. Yeah. Okuda now over the 80 pitch mark. Two zero is low. Three and zero. Three zero coming is a called strike on the inside edge. This is a chance for Okuda to go one two three for the third straight inning. I just give the offense every opportunity to crawl back into this game. 3-1 coming. That is a solid single through the hole on the left side. And finally, after nine straight retired by Okuda, the T-Bolts get somebody on in the form of a single by Cole Freeze. Second time aboard for Freeze, and he possesses some speed on the base path, so that's going to be something that Okuda will have to be aware of, as will Matt Thomas behind the dish. Runner on first and freeze. McMillan at the plate, who is 0 for 2 today. And the runner is off right away. Thomas unable to transfer it from the glove to the throwing hand. And in there at the stolen base is Cole Freeze. Was a called strike, 0 and 1. The wind up, the pitch swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Two count. See where Thomas wants it. Takes that one down in a way, does McMillan. Kuda's done a great job all game getting ahead of batters. Did so again here. Head 0 and 2. Needs to get the pitch to put him away. The wind up the pitch. There's a swing and a blooper down the right field line. It will drop as a fair ball. Runner rounding third, and he will score, and it's 4-0 T-Bolts. That was a beautifully placed ball, obviously. Out inside out swing for the righty McMillan. Just tucked it inside the fair foul line down the right field side. Nothing that Christian Jane could do, and given that it was on the opposite side of the field, it was an easy decision for the runner, Freeze, who already had a great jump heading to third to round third and come in at home. So now runner on first and two outs in the inning. We talked about this yesterday. The T-Bolts, you know, they've just found ways to hit. You know, their balls have been put in the right spot. Sometimes that's luck. Sometimes that's just a good approach at the plate, and it happened there. There's a swing and a high pop-up back over our head by Tyler Murray. The catcher at the plate. Murray steps back in and taps the plate once. Ryan winds up, delivers the 0-1, is a called strike, 0-2.
Runner is off on the 0-2 delivery. It's in the dirt. And again, this inability of the big train pitching staff and the inability of Thomas to pose any threat to well, Bay Steelers has allowed the T-Bolts to score two runs tonight because guys were able to move up and then come around when either blue pits or errors were committed. One and two the count. Thomas sets up right over the heart of the plate. That one bounces in. Runner will advance over to third. Two and two count. And you would imagine this is the last inning of work for Ryan Okuda, but he's got to get out of this inning. Yeah. Two quick outs, and then things have started to kind of come unraveled since then. Two two swing and a high pop up into shallow left field. Torres moving back, and he'll make the play. So we will go to the bottom of the sixth. Four nothing. T bolts on top. Welcome back to Shirley Povich Field. Now for the bottom of the sixth inning in a game that is chugging along between the Big Train and the Silver Spring T bolts. Christian Jane will lead us off in the bottom of the sixth. Jane Cotto and Thomas Big Train trailing the T bolts four nothing in the game. That will conclude both team seasons, the championship game of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League in the 2019 season. Alex Mikett has held the big train to no runs and no hits through five innings. He's retired four straight. He's really been in a bit of a groove recently. There's a called strike, one and one. And Jane's just trying to get his swing back. Had a very good regular season, but one for 13 so far in this postseason. For this LCS, rather. There's a swing and a foul off. One and two. One and two count. Mike Kit winds up and delivers that one just a tad inside. Two and two. It's a really nice pitch. Draws the long look of the umpire. Two two count, the wind up, the pitch. There's a swing and a chopper right in front of home plate. This one could be a little trouble for Murray. Throw over is way off line, but Gallo able to stretch out and make the play. Gallo's done a fantastic job of extending all game at first base. A couple of throws from his fellow infielders haven't been the cleanest, but he's been able to make up for it, bailing them out at first base, able to keep the big train hitless up to this point. Final count for tonight's game, 520. Kobe Cotto ready to stand in. 0 for 2 tonight with a ground out to second and a fly out to right. First pitch is a strike at the top of the zone. We've seen that top of the zone be there about the last inning and a half. Yeah, and the big train players need to become aware of that and they need to start perhaps swinging at a couple of these pitches that look borderline simply to just try to get something into play. 0-1 called strike, 0-2. And, and he's hitting his spots like that, it's very tough to beat Alex Mikett. Absolutely. He is cruising right now. Now at 83 pitches. Swing and a foul off. Kobe does a great job. He's done it all season of working long at bats and Getting the pitch count of the opposing pitcher high, this is something that he needs to continue to do today in order to try to get Mike it out of the game and turn it over to the bullpen. The pitch swinging the ground ball, base hit through the left side, and the big train finally have a base hit with one out in the sixth. Got to start somewhere. And a single by Kobe is a good way to do it. Now you have Thomas and Hamrock coming up, two of the hottest hitters in this postseason for Bethesda with only one away here in the bottom of the sixth. There is some soft toss going on in the T-Bolt bullpen. Go, 
So runner on first and one out. Thomas in the batter's box. There's a pitch up high. And we've noticed that when Mike it has runners behind him is when the command can start to waver a little yeah. bit. When he was retiring so many batters in a row, obviously he felt more comfortable and could find his spots easier. But now he's going to have to do it with a little bit more pressure. Still only a four-run ball game. 1-0 is a strike on the outer edge. He's had much better command of the curveball the last couple innings, and he finds the outside black right there for strike one. He's now at 87 pitches. In all likelihood, the last inning for him, and we've talked about our personal uncomfortableness with the way that Doug Reamer handles his pitching staff, but it's a pitch up high two and one. Hey, I mean, if it works, then it works. That's, that's the thing. So, I, I mean, mean, well, it's about... I mean, it's working to help them win games, but yeah. that with a concern. Is oh, in terms of, like, health yeah. and player, Yeah, I mean, that's a whole other thing. I and mean, that should, at least in our view, always be the number yeah, one Yeah, the priority. Concern, protecting the players and keeping them healthy. 2-1, swinging a fly ball into right center field, moving over as that one hangs up a long time. Cole Freeze is there for the out. Now Drew Hamrock ready to stand in. Hamrock tonight, hit by a pitch and a strikeout swinging. Cotto, decent lead over there at first. Now the quick throw over is way up high. Gallo collects it. That one was high and outside. That would have definitely gotten away and allowed Kobe to move up to second had Gallo not made a very nice play. There's a swing and a ground ball over deep in the hole on the left side. Going to throw for the force. And once again, Ian McMillan and Dominic Ford combined for an excellent play at second base just to get Cotto in time as they had no play at first. It'll be a fielder's choice and the inning is over. Welcome back now to the top of the seventh inning at Shirley Povich Field. Greer Holston into the game for the Bethesda Big Train. Ryan Okuda ends up being masterful here tonight for the Big Train, but they find themselves in a 4 nothing hole in game three of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League championship game. 1-1 one, one count. Holston winds up. Powers that one a little low. 2-1. Kuda, Kuda's final line. Six innings of work, four hits, one run. It was earned. No walks and four strikeouts. He was stellar. 2-1 count. That one is behind the back of Dominic Ford. Definitely wasn't intentional. No, Greer just overthrew that one. Three one count. There's a swing and a miss. Greer has a wild fastball. Like yeah. not in terms of wild command, you can't control it. I mean wild is in, it's got some zip on it. It is a real power pitch. Three two coming, and that one is fouled back. There's another foul off. Good at bat from the second baseman, Dominic Ford. Train would love to get a quick inning here. Got their first base hit last inning. And there's one a little low. Check swing didn't go. And down to first is Dominic Ford. On just, you know, take your small victories. You got a base hit, now you're on the scoreboard in some capacity. You just need to then continue to streak them as they're running out of outs. Indeed they are. They'll have just nine outs to do something. And now off on the first pitch is Ford. Throw on down is a good one from Matt Thomas. Pulled him off the bag. And trying to say he got the tag in there was Gio Diaz. And the umpire 
So I believe that was the third base umpire who had moved over, and now time called. Well, so Gio's case that he was trying to plead was that Ford overslid the bag and then came off the bag, and Gio then tried to tag him while he was no longer on the bag because he got in there in time. It just a matter of was he still touching the base, but umpires ruled that he was indeed, and he takes stolen second sta stolen safely. One zero count. There's a bunt popped up over the dugout. If you remember, is this exact same situation? Well, not necessarily exact same situation, but there was this situation with a runner on second last game in last night's affair at Blair Stadium, and there was a bunt that was popped straight back to the mound by Ryan Metz, and he was able to turn the one six double play. One one count. Swing and a foul back. One and two. A lot of tension in the air right now. Big Train need to just get a couple outs and then get the bats going to just liven up the ball game. One and two count. Definitely could use a strikeout here. At the environment of a funeral right now. Yeah. <laughs> One and two. There's a swing and a miss, and that is strike three. Now, Holston's fastball is just nutty. So far, nobody's been able to show that they can catch up to it, but you have the meat of the order coming up here with Brady Pari, Anthony Gallo, and if necessary, Lucas Donlin. So now that brings up Brady Pari. First pitch is a little high and outside. One zero, swing and a miss. And that one backswing got yeah. a piece of Matt Thomas. Nice little tap and apology from Brady Perry. Yeah, the umpire ruled obstruction if there had tried to have been an infor an advancement from Dominic Ford. It would have been nullified. One one count. Went a little high. Two and one the count. Holston winds up, delivers that one a little high and outside. Holston looks back at second, winds up, delivers that one back. I'm surprised you're flinching Foul. at balls here after the ones that, I mean, we had broadcasters hit yesterday, yeah. man. Yesterday was a, a day full of casualties. Of course, you were spared. Yeah. There's a pitch inside as the runner was off to third, and now will be runners on the corners as that's ball four. Tony Gallo now comes up with runners on the corners. Out goes Craig Lopez, the pitching coach, to have a discussion. Double play ball is in a realm of possibility here with the runner on first. They're going to bring the entire infield in to have this mound visit with Craig Lopez. I mean, Big Train, they've cruised throughout this entire summer. And then 
They faced a little bit of adversity in game one of Alexandria, but then started to really rattle off runs as the game got going. We're not seeing that really right now. They need to get something going here in these final three innings to even make this a ball game. And, I mean, this is nothing short of a shock for Bethesda fans and for Bethesda players. I'm sure this is, this is gut check time. I mean, yeah. this is a team that shut you out game one, 9 nothing. First time you were held under three runs all summer. You guys came back and had a good outing at their ballpark, 6-3 coming out on top in a very good ball game back and forth affair. It's going to have to be a big comeback once again here in the final game of the season. There is no more games after this. You have one last chance to make this up, and that is in these final three innings. And the runner is potentially off from first, throwing on the brakes was Brady Perry. Well, so the issue here is that while a double play ball would be in effect, perry has got some speed to him, and they're not going to, you would think, Matt Thomas knows well enough how much Bethesda tries to draw the double steal. He's not going to go to second on a stolen base attempt here. And Thomas is going to throw it down. Not going to be in time. They don't attempt the double steal, and the runner is just in there safely. So now runners on second and third. 1-1 one, one count, one out in the inning, really raises the need for a strikeout here. And that's kind of shocking to see Ford not make an attempt towards home. Yeah. He has two stolen bases since his time getting on plate, on base rather. There's a swing and a blooper down the first base side. It will drop firmly foul. You have Gallo up now behind in a 1-2 count, and then Lucas Donlin, who is... Been the best hitter in the Cal Ripken League this postseason. He has yet to get on base tonight, waiting on deck. 1-2 count. Holston winds up, delivers that one as it's chopped foul. And Gallo has his fingerprints all over this ball game. The RBI double in the top of the first, and then he's made several incredible plays at first base, bailing out his infielders to keep this ball game at 4 nothing. 1-2, Holston looks back at second, winds up, and delivers that one outside, 2-2. Two two. Great stab by Matt Thomas on the fastball outside from Holston. That one was going to ricochet off the backstop potentially. I mean, how hard that ball is thrown, you could see perhaps a friendly bounce, but you don't want to risk it, obviously. 2-2. Two, two. Holston winds up. There's a swing and a miss. Down goes Tony Gallo. That's Holston's second strikeout of the frame. He's now got two walks and two strikeouts this inning. Yeah, and that, that's a tough pill for Gallo to swallow. He knew that was a ball and just instincts took over and he took a big hack at it. So now runner is on second and third, two outs in the inning. Lucas Donlin at the plate. First pitch coming is a little outside. You would imagine you could get potentially at least two innings from Holston. So they need to drag this game on. 1-0 is high, 2-0. Obviously, pretty much the entire bullpen available tonight for Bethesda being the last game of the summer. high three and oh since trying to paint the corners against the dangerous Lucas Donlin but just isn't hitting the spot three oh coming ball four not sure if that was pitching around Donlin or not well, they certainly weren't going to give him really anything to swing at, you would imagine. It was going to have to be something close, trying, probably trying to paint the black a little bit to get perhaps a called strike. But like I said, he just couldn't hit his spots there, and now the bases are juiced. So that'll bring Devon Griffin into the batter's box. He swings and bloops this one over to the right side, coming over is Gio Diaz, and he will make the play. So 
The T-Bolts will leave them loaded. Big train now to the bottom of the seventh. Stretch time at Shirley Povich Field. Nine outs to try to muster four runs when we come back. Welcome back to the bottom of the seventh inning here between the T-Bolts and the Big Train. Big Train in a 4 nothing hole. I've got to find some way to change the narrative in a hurry as there's a called strike to Tate Soderstrom. They have just one hit through six innings against Alex Mikett, who is stunningly still out there in this seventh inning. There's a ball in the dirt, one and one. He was at 90 pitches through six. Swing and a foul back. One and two, the count. There's a swing and a bouncing ball over to Mike it right to him, flips it right to first for the out. It'll bring up Keith Torres. Big train have not had a leadoff runner on this entire ball game. No, they have not. Well, actually, no. They they did have Thomas oh, yes. get a leadoff walk, but they haven't had a leadoff hit, I guess, rather. Some sort of beeping sound. Yeah, it's, it's the bus. <laughs> First pitch is a called strike on the outside edge to Keith Torres. There's a pitch down and away. One and one count. Pitch high and tight on Torres. Called strike two and two. Mike gets had that outside edge all game. Yep, and he's taking advantage of it. Big train hitters are going to have to adjust. There's one down and outside. Three and two. Full count on Torres. Big train just trying to get somebody aboard. Three two is a little high. Again, Torres has now drawn a second walk tonight thanks to the compressed strike zone at the top. Yeah, it's 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 shorter on the top and wider on the outsides and the outside edges. And I mean that's I'm sure frustrating for Mike it, especially against a guy like Torres, who's one of the shorter batters in this league. Been getting strikes to every other batter at that same spot, but 5-7 Torres not able to get the call. First pitch to Foster is high and outside. Still haven't seen anybody test the arm of Tyler Murray behind the plate in this game. And while you need base runners everywhere, you, any way you can get them, you want to perhaps try to provide a spark too. One zero is a called strike. One and one. There's a swing and a foul off. One and two.
Foster, the left-handed hitter, with Torres on first base. Swings and fouls that one off his feet. Painful foul ball right there for Darius Foster. And Foster checks swing. They say he went around for strike three. And that's that's just frustrating. I mean, while it was close, whether or not he went around, it, you always would like to see an appeal over yeah. to the third base umpire who has a better vantage point, but... There's no third base umpire. Yep. That is, I guess, a problem here. You have the runner at, or the umpire at first watching Gallo hold the runner and then the umpire at second watching the potential stolen base. There's a pitch down and in. There's another one down and in. Kate Hunter's now taken two balls. Two and oh, the count. There's the called strike, two and one. Mike it now at 108 pitches. Imagine this has to be his last inning. There's a swing and a miss from Cade Hunter. That curveball that was not there early on for Mike, it has been there this inning in the last several. Two and two. Can Cade Hunter keep the inning alive? Runner is off. He swings, hits this one through the hole on the left side. And that is a base hit now. Two runners on and two outs. Second hit of the game for the big train. You take offense any way you can get it, but you need to capitalize on this opportunity. Only one out left in this bottom of the seventh. You need to try to at least bring one home. So we're going to have a mound visit between the battery, Murray, and Mikett. 109 pitches for Alex Mikett. And now finally, looks like we're going to get that pitching change. And this is where things can get interesting. Yeah. We've talked about at length during last night's broadcast that Big Train have done well against pitchers for Silver Spring. Mike it show it, tossing a gem tonight, as did Charleston in game one. And now you have to go to the bullpen. Waiting to see who it's going to be out of that bullpen for the Silver Spring T-Bolts. Number 13. That is Brandon Kale. Brandon Kale, rather. It's who we suspected it was probably going to be. Well, Kale this season, six games, four starts, a 4.20 ERA, a 1.73 whip. It's a high whip for a rather low ERA given those numbers. Was good at pitching around guys on base. He came in in the ninth inning a couple days ago in game one. Was able to close that game out and now is being asked to go to work here. Big Train did not see him much before this game. That was their first encounter with him.
two on, two out, top of the order. This is this is an opportunity. Big train need to capitalize. Gio Diaz now ready to stand in. G is now up to the plate. Jane waiting on deck and then potentially Cotto in the hole if you can keep the line moving. Cotto, one of only two players that has a base hit against the T-Bolts tonight. Gio Diaz has had some good at-bats. Hit some balls pretty hard but in the wrong spots tonight. McMillan is pretty deep in the hole. Now he's starting to creep up. It's a pretty big gap on the right side between Dominic Ford and Anthony Gallo. First pitch rides down and in close to hitting Gio Diaz. And that one is also low, 2 and 0. Oh. The arm motion from Kale, pretty long and whiny. He's got a long right arm. There's a swing and a foul off the bat of Diaz, 2 and 1. Runner on first, Hunter. Runner on second is Torres. 2-1 count. There's a pitch swinging a ground ball over to the side. Gallo can't quite knock it down. Now flips over to Kale in time for the out. Anthony Gallo has been shaky at first at times, but every time he bobbles it, he's always able to make that play comfortably in time for the out. A 3-1 put out ends the inning, and we will go to the eighth. Welcome back now to the eighth inning at Shirley Povich Field between the big train and the T-Bolts. This is game three of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League Championship. Ooh. Ooh, and there's a pitch up high from Holston as I was introducing it. Holston's fastball, as we've talked about, is real hard. And when it starts to buzz inside, that can be scary. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was, that was close. It wasn't intentional, but that was close. One zero is high, two and zero, and it looks like we're going to have a warning to the dugout. I think he pointed that direction. Which dugout? The big train dugout. Interesting. Maybe even, I don't know. I mean, he's getting out his book and writing something down. That is the home plate umpire Snyder. Well, Yash Rain came out to the top step and started jawing at Greer Holston. Rain was the one that had to be subdued. That one rides inside and gets a piece of him on down to first. See, look, look, here we go. Yash Rain picking up, picking up the bat and he's getting a word from the umpire. And that'll be a warning it looks like too. Also taking the book out again, Snyder's gonna write down his name. Yeah, and this is, this is a way to to handle the situation. You can't let things get out of hand in the game three. And now there's gonna be a conversation with the third base coach. And at the end of the day, just control your players. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no reason for a guy who's not in the game to be, you know, coming on running out. Just Well that I believe their third base coach is their head coach. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that is that is Reamer. And that's why he came over just to tell his dugout to calm down. Ian McMillan ready to stand in now as Cole Freeze stands on first after the hit by pitch. McMillan and then Murray in this top of the eighth. Four nothing T-Bolts on top. Quick throw back from Holston. Yeah. 
First pitch, rides high and tight. Looks like it did it get, yeah, it's a foul ball. Looks like it got the hilt of the bat yeah. for McMillan. The runner was trying to advance. They'll send him back. Another throwback. Oh, one swing and a high pop up. Foul and out of play, 0 and 2. O2 coming, swinging a high foul out of play. It's past the 9.15 hour here in this game. Runner stands on first, none out in this top of the eighth inning. Holston winds up, runner is off from first, and the foul is straight back to the screen. And Freeze has perhaps the best speed on the T bolts. Yeah, I think so. And Matt Thomas has shown no ability so far to be able to get would be base dealers out. 0 2 count. Holston winds up. That one is a called strike three on the inside edge. Got McMillan looking there. That's now strikeout number three for Greer Holston since being inserted in the seventh. And that'll bring up Tyler Murray. Murray will take a practice swing and then tap his feet three times and get ready to go to bat. Runner still on first. We've seen Freeze interested in going, but has not really gotten the chance yet, either foul balls or other things going on. There's a quick throw back from Holston. That was a nice move. And not a huge lead for Freeze. That's why he was able to get back so quickly. It's a very short primary lead, but then takes several steps to get a larger secondary lead. Wind up the pitch, swing and a miss. Another fastball inside. High and tight. Where's Ryan Roll? In the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that's his, that's his pitch. On the bench. Oh, and one count. Wind up swing and a line drive foul. Today was the MLB trade deadline. Yep, we had several big moves, yep. primarily in Houston. In a, about 4.01 p.m., I sent into a group chat that it was a pathetic trade deadline. Yikes. And then the Zach Greinke deal rolled in and a few others, and all of a sudden the narrative switched in a hurry. 0-2 fouled off. Another high and inside fastball getting him to swing. Tyler Murray obviously finds those tantalizing. And, I mean, if he can turn on one, it's crushed. Yeah. Because that's similar to what you see with Macy O'Campbell. Flamethrower like Holston, you get contact and you get every piece of that ball, it's going to go a long way. 0-2, oh, the wind up, the pitch. Nice off-speed delivery, like a curveball on the inside edge for a called strike three. Two outs now. Yep, and Holston already up to the same number of strikeouts that Okuda put up four in the ball game. Yeah. 
40 pitches now for Greer Holson. This likely his final inning. That'll bring up Dominic Ford. Pitching staff coming in relief for Piccolino has done fantastic for Bethesda. It's just they need to get some offense to help them out. One is a little high. There's a throwback. You're going to have to wait a long time to get a pickoff move that tags Cole Freeze because he doesn't take his secondary lead until just before Greer's letting go of the baseball. Pitch down and away, 1-0. and oh. Ball down and outside, 3-0. and oh. Good pick by Thomas behind the plate to keep that from hitting the backstop. There's one high, ball four, a four-pitch walk to Dominic Ford. And Ford, that's now two straight walks he's drawn. And back-to-back -back innings. He let off the last frame with a walk from Holston, and now that bring, or actually was from Okuda, or no, it was from Holston, yep. yeah. And now Rozier stepping in, two on and two out. Here, 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. There's one down and in, 1-0. and Holston just needs to find the zone. Potentially work just, if you can't strike them out, just try to get weak contact. This ball low, 2 and 0. Oh. That's now six straight balls out of the hand of Greer Holston. Looks back at second. Now looks back to the plate. There's a swing and a high pop up into shallow left field. This one could be trouble for Torres moving back. He leaps up and he'll make the grab. So that is a nice little play from Keith Torres to end the top of the eighth inning. We'll go to the bottom half, 4 nothing. T-Volts on top. Welcome back now to the bottom of the eighth inning. Shirley Povich Field, big train and T-Volts. New pitcher is still in the game, Braden Kale after finishing off that seventh inning. Got the final out off of Gio Diaz. He delivers a ball one to Christian Jane. There's ball two. There's a called strike, two and one. It's been spacious outside of lefties. But inside the righties, it's a lot tighter. Yes. There's a pitch down and away. Three and one. Well, generally, you do see that. The outside edge tends to be wider for umpires because you have less of a defined zone, whereas the inside often can get tight with the batter right there. There's a four, There's a walk. Ball four to Christian Jane. Well, see, the problem I have with that is that that was a, that was a ball, or a, a strike, rather, you know, just a pitch ago. Yeah. And, and, I mean, you want it to just be consistent, especially if you're the T-Bolts. You're trying to close out this ball game and win a championship. You can't really be – you're not really in the mood to have balls go back and forth as whether or not they're balls or strikes. Runner on first, Kobe Cotto now stands in the batter's box. He takes a strike on the outside edge. 
Same exact pitch. Oh one, that one's inside. One one high and outside, two and one. Some more action in the T Bolts bullpen. Looks like Tyler Dieball's up. He's been the closer. Two and one, the count. Wind up the pitch, swinging a ground ball. Base hit through the right side. Christian Jane will stop at second now. Two runners on and nobody out. In this inning, Kobe Cotto, the hit machine, singles through the right side. Yep, second straight base hit for Kobe. But what are you going to do with this opportunity? That's been the case this entire ball game. Bethesda has had runners in scoring position multiple times throughout this ball game haven't been able to drive any home this is the rbi king during the regular season matt thomas up to the plate what have you done for me lately yep. that's pretty much the mindset of bethesda big train fans you need to drive in at least one run to make this just an exciting ball game again you just need to get a shot of momentum at this point so two runners on, nobody out. Four nothing, T-Bolts on top. Big train trying to get back in this game in the bottom of the eighth. First pitch, nice off speed, just drops over the heart of the plate for a strike. And there's a swing and a fly ball off the bat of Thomas. This one to deep left center field, back towards the track, towards the wall. It is gone! Matt Thomas hits it out. And it is 4-3, big train on top. What a time to have your first home run all of 2019. He didn't hit a single one at William & Mary. He didn't hit a single one this summer for the big train. And he just hit the biggest home run of his life in the championship game three. It's a one-run ball game. Four to three, big train now trailing by just one run and out comes a member of the coaching staff for the T-Bolts. And that is the adrenaline shot this team needed. And he put that over, I mean, that's, that's the, over the scoreboard part of the stadium. That, that is Left center field, the highest fence. That was a big boy shot as we're gonna have a new pitcher come out, that's the hook. Short yep. leash, it's going to be die ball, I think, from here on out. I'll have to confirm the number. He'll need to get a six-out save if it is die ball in a one-run baseball game. Rally caps are on of the big train faithful walking around the concourse. Well, things just got interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Strap in, gang. That's the hit of the season. I didn't think that was going to get out. I mean, it looked it I mean, looked like it was going to it looked like it was going to you know drop inside just on how high the ball was, but it kept carrying and carrying and carrying, and it cleared the train on top of the Shirley Povich Field scoreboard in left center field by about five feet. It's about 360 to dead center. Now you take into account how tall that wall is, you're probably looking at a good 45 feet up. I mean, we saw, what, maybe one homer over that yeah, wall we, yeah, the entire well, we, year. Yeah, I mean, that that is an absolute bomb. And, again, what a play for Matt Thomas, a guy who has been so good in this big train lineup all season long. The only thing you could knock him for was the power. He didn't have any home runs all season long, and he just came up with the biggest one all season for the big train in a critical situation. It's 4-3. And now it is die ball. Yeah, die ball into the game. Relieving Braden Kill, who gets one third of an inning, two hits, three runs, all of them earned in a walk, facing just four batters. Die ball in the regular season, a 5 1 6 ERA, a whip of one and a half. He was not particularly effective in the regular season. 12 games, one of them was a start. 
a sub nine K per nine innings, meaning he's not really a strikeout guy. Balls tend to be in play with Tyler Dyball, and the big train have scored five runs off of him in just two innings against in the regular season. He'll need to go two innings here to get the save. Well, if you're Bethesda, this is this is still a time where you can't get ahead of yourself. Yes, it's only a one-run yep. ball game, but the meteor order for the most part is now passed. You need to keep the line moving in the eighth inning. You only have six outs to work with yeah. to get back in this ball game and potentially come out on top or force extras. But they Hemrock. still have more to do. Hemrock standing in the batter's box. Runners, no runners on. Base is empty. And he takes the first pitch high and tight for ball one. Gallo at first and Donlin at third are drawn in. But now Gallo will move back. Donlin will stay in parallel to the third base bag. The big train chant starting. The wind up, the 1-0, that one is also high, 2-0. and and if you're Tyler Dyball, you do not want to put Drew Hamrock on base. Absolutely, and you have to think about this now for Dyball. He's been warming up in the pen for quite some time, thinking that he's going to have a four-run advantage yeah. to work with. Now it's just one, and he's facing a very good hitter as of late, Drew Hamrock. 2-0 count. Winds up, delivers that one. High ball three. Buckle Everything up. Everything upstairs right now. And Hamrock's been the T-Bolts killer this late season and postseason. Nearly hit for the cycle in last night's game and then hit two bombs in the last meeting between these two in the regular season. 3-0 on the way. He finally finds the zone there. Still at the top of the zone, though. Everything upstairs from die ball. Hamrock 6 for 11 in this LCS with four RBIs. 3-1. The wind up, that one's upstairs. Drew Hamrock's on first base. We still need another hero. Yeah. And Tate Soderstrom, a guy who was involved in some shenanigans yesterday, not to his fault at all. He was drilled up near the head, and Sal Colangelo is going to have a word with him to make sure that they are absolutely on the same page. And it should be noted that we saw die ball last night, and he allowed a run in the only inning he pitched. A hit and two walks, one strikeout, six batters faced in that ninth inning when he was brought in. That made it 6-3. to three. It was the final score. Tie ball, a native of Honolulu, Hawaii. He's got, a, he's got a long fly home. Yeah, he does. Goes to UH. So run around first, nobody out in the bottom of the eighth inning. And for a guy like Tate Soderstrom, who has had an up and down season, this is a chance for you to come up big for your ball club. The let's go big train chance starting. The T-Bolt crowd now very quiet. Drew Hamrock, a huge lead over there at first base. We know about his ability to go if he can get an opportunity. And now they're going to throw back. He anticipates it well, and the crowd boos. Well, Drew had... Three stolen bases in one game, and if my memory serves me correctly, I will double check this. It was against the T-Bolts. I'll have to double check that. I'm not sure. Finished with 16 as a total in the regular season. Again, missing a lot of the season with injury. He stays, and Soderstrom shows bunt and lays it down foul. Sal, interesting decision making. Oh, three was against the Braves, two against the Aces. He actually has not, he's gotten one stolen base against the T-Bulls, and that was on July 29th here at home. That was in that 9 nothing loss in game one. Oh, 1 count. See if Tate shows bunt again. And Hamrock quickly back. I was wrong. I actually didn't hit the view all. It was the T-Bolts. Game one of this season, he stole three bags. Well, he and stole then three he stole, And the then he stole three the very next day. Had six through two games. I remember that. And that's, he played one more and then. And then had yeah. several days off. 0-1 oh, count. Tate's just going to take that one. A called strike on the outer edge. He's not happy. It's been a strike all game. Except for when it was a ball. <laughs> Can't argue that. <laughs> now the shoe's getting tied. 
This is big for Hamrock. Hamrock's tying his own shoes. 0-2 oh, count. Pitch, swing, and a foul down the third baseline. Arcing over towards the big train bullpen where there now are some guys up, it looks like. Well, yeah, you'd imagine they're going to throw out their best arms. You, I would not shock me to see Elliot Zollner and Chase Lee potentially coming into this ball game. Only one inning left, though. 0-2 oh, count. Tate's got to be in plate protection mode now. Now they throw back on Hamrock again. You have Torres waiting on deck. He's gotten aboard twice via the walk and struck out. And then Darius Foster behind him in the hole. He has yet to get on base tonight with two strikeouts. O2 count, now they throw back. Callow's not even trying to apply the tag here, it's just keeping Hamrock honest. O2 count, Hamrock takes that same lead. It's been pretty much this whole at bat with Soderstrom. The O2 coming, swinging a nubber down the third baseline and it will just roll foul. That would have been a <laughs> Gift yeah. had that stayed foul, or fair, rather. This is a good at-bat with Tate Soderstrom, really making die ball work. He's already at, I believe that was pitch number 10. I don't know if they've yep. inputted it yet. Either 9 or 10 for die ball, and still nobody out. And it's all about, like you said, plate discipline. Two-strike approach. Have a wide base in the box and just find your pitch. Don't settle for anything. 0-2 count. That one high and outside. Yep, that was a pitch out. Yep. We've seen some raw power from Tate before. Just needs to find one that he likes. He's had the unfortunate luck of getting under a few balls this year, but we know that if he can get on one, he can send it a long way. One and two the count. Now the throw back. <laughs> and see, this is this is a big this is a big part of this game that needs to be taken into consideration because yep. while die ball's not throwing pitches towards home plate, Hamrock is clearly in his headspace living rent free. Hamrock has not made any moves towards the second base bag. He's just been bouncing around with a lead at first. And Tate's a lefty and tends to be more of a pull hitter. If he puts it in right field, Hamrock might go to third. That one in the dirt now, two and two. Good block by Tyler Murray. And see, that's the other thing that Hamrock needs to take into consideration. He was the only pitcher, or runner rather, that was able to get in safely against Tyler Murray yep. on a stolen base, and that was in game one. You don't want to do anything foolish. Tate's done a good job working back this count towards his favor. 2-2 two, two count. Hamrock, that same lead. Two, 2-2. Two, swing and a miss. Got him. It's like a curveball there and Soderstrom is down. That was a nasty pitch. Yep. Absolutely nasty, and he, he needed that. That's exactly what he needed. Now one down, double play is in effect, but it's going to be hard with Torres at the plate and Hamrock with the lead at first. So only one out. I mean, again, if Hamrock steals, he's in scoring position. I mean, it's you know, a lot still going on yep. here. Opportunities are available. Big Train just have to settle down and keep playing their game. Donlin is playing right about five feet to the right of the first third base bag, and McMillan's pretty deep in the hole. Yeah, if Torres can get it past Donlin but closer to that line, it's getting through. McMillan's not that fast as he's shaded up the middle. And now Hamrock is off. That pitch inside. Murray lost it, and Hamrock will just stay at second. He was sliding, but he has stolen... 
second base, and now the tying run in scoring position. And perhaps just as big. I mean, you have every strike matters in this point of this ball game. That was a, that was a ball inside. Yep. And, and that was a good jump. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that would have been a bang-bang play. We've seen the arm of Tyler Murray. but It's a darn good arm. Exactly. Ty Drew Hamrock's got a great set of wheels. Like you said, great jump. Would have been an interesting play at second, but no play needed to be made as that ball got in and out of the glove of Murray. 1-0 count. Runner on second is Drew Hamrock. We've seen him steal third before. Yeah, that would be quite a risk to take. 1-0 coming. That one is spiked in. Die ball now has thrown eight balls and six strikes since being inserted into this game. Waiting on deck is Darius Foster and then Cade Hunter in the hole. At the very least, if they can keep you know, this inning interesting, you present the possibility that Cotto and Thomas could come back up in the ninth. Perhaps, yeah, but you want to just do everything you can. If you can yeah. tie this ball game up now, that would be fantastic. 2-0 count. Hamrock is going. That one's in the dirt. Good running start, but he's going to be in there safely. Hamrock got a great jump and a phenomenal throw from Murray, but just not enough. That is a gutsy, gutsy decision by Hamrock to go, and now the time is called as they are going to dust off home plate. Dave Snyder is, and we've seen Dieball now throw three straight balls. He's not effective at the current moment. If this one gets away, there's a play at the plate. What a slide by Hamrock. It reminds me a lot of what we saw here. We have the third base umpire coming over to third base to be by Hamrock as the runner. Yeah. We said it reminds me a lot of the slide we saw on the triple last night because there was the ball beat Hamrock to the bag, and Donlin had the glove down with the ball in the glove, perfectly placed. That throw from Murray was on a line, but somehow Hamrock just able to get there just before the tag could be applied. 3-0 count. See what die ball dials up here. The pitch is right down Broadway for a strike. Three and one. You could see a squeeze. Potentially, but the <laughs> infield's playing in now. Yeah. They are fully They're aware. They're ready for it. Absolutely. And, I mean, you're in wild pitch ter territory here, too. Three and one. Die ball winds up, swing and a ground ball over to short. They're going to go home with it. Throw in. He is out. And that's a big time. That's a huge play. Yep, and that looked like the right call to me. Absolutely agree. I think that was the yep. right call. It was a little high to Murray was the throw, but he got the tag in. Hamrock was going. It's aggressive play. Yep, but, I mean, that's the play that has to be made. I yep. mean, it was a fantastic yeah, job. You're in run prevention mode Yeah, there. absolutely. It's a 4-3 ball game. Torres now on first. He presents a little bit of a base stealing threat, but now you have two down. You only have four outs left to tie up this ball game. Well, again, Torres is a speedy guy down there at first. You could t test Murray again. Absolutely. Try to move in scoring position, see if Foster can play the hero. And while Dieball is only officially at 17 pitches, with the amount of throw overs to first, he's, he's, he's thrown the ball about 35 times. It feels like, at least. Torres at first. Foster in the batter's box. He takes that one in the dirt. It's going to roll away, and Torres will move to second. Don't even need to steal. And Torres, he, he saw how far that got away. He was not sliding. He had left the possibility for him to potentially round second and head into third should that ball get really away from Tyler Murray. But obviously a good move to just stay at second. Foster needs to come up big here. Two for 11 in this LCS. He does have two RBIs. Would love to get the third here with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Now Murray will go out there to talk this inning. It just has been going on for a lifetime, it feels like. Yep, and that's exactly what the big train needed to do. I mentioned it earlier in this broadcast. They needed to slow down this ball game. It was just cruising mode for the T-Bolts pitching staff, and they were, I mean, just mowing down the big train lineup. Foster tonight 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts, 2 for 11 now in the postseason, not counting what he did in Alexandria game 2 because that's not part of the point streak postseason numbers at the current moment.
There are some people on Periscope that think that Hamrock might have gotten in there, but you know. I, I I don't think so. I mean, it was a close play, but I I, I don't I mean, think yeah, from our yeah. view. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> it's a bang bang play. You know, the umpire's call is the umpire call. You got to bring him home in a way that's a little less controversial than that. Darius Foster singling here would probably do that. Big hole up the middle, especially on the right side. Yeah, but you don't want to necessarily test the arm of Griffin. 1-0 is a called strike. We've seen great defense from the Silver Spring T-Bolts all series long, including there in getting Hamrock at the plate. One and one count. Can Darius Foster deliver the big moment? And not this game up. 1-1 one, one coming, swinging a ground ball, but he yanked it foul. One and two. Two strike count. We'll see what die ball goes to here. Hunter on deck. So as it stands, if Foster cannot extend the inning, it would be Hunter, Diaz, and Jane in the nine. You have to imagine Chase Lee's warming up in the bullpen. One and two the count, 4-3 game. Die ball, a long look in at Tyler Murray. He's thrown 20 pitches in this inning. Torres at second, two outs. That one in the dirt, nice block by Murray. Got to work a good at bat here again, like Soderstrom, just find your pitch. Don't settle for anything. Foster is due. I mean, he's he, he has had a rough postseason and this is an opportunity for him to come up big for his ball club. 2-2 two, two count. And there's a massive hole in right center field. That one's high. Foster did a good job of framing it with his body. <laughs> yeah. That's the Kobe Cotto special. Three and two the count. Big Train have gotten three in this inning off of the previous pitcher, Braden Kale, on a three-run homer by Matt Thomas. They then relieved Kale, put in die ball. He has had a bumpy stretch, but has not surrendered the advantage of the T-Bolts yet. 3-2 count. Die ball winds up. The pitch high and outside. Foster draws the walk. Great at bat for Darius Foster. Got behind one and two, able to work back a couple of balls that were outside. That 2-2 two -two count was close to bring it up full, but that that pitch from die ball just wasn't anywhere near the zone. And now you have the youngest player yeah. in the Cal Ripken League. I mean, one of them, he's a rising freshman. Like you said earlier, missed his orientation. Yep. Well, make it worth it, young man. Do something here. Two on, two out, 4-3 game. T-Bolts on top of the big train in game three of the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League championship game. Series tied at one. This is the deciding game three. The wind up from die ball. That's a great curveball for a called strike. And you Throws have, Hunter. You have two of the fastest guys on the roster on base in Torres and Foster. Anything in the gap, you could potentially see Foster go from first to home. Yeah. If Hunter can connect here. We've seen him show some power at different points. One for three tonight with a solid single. Back last inning. 0-1 is high. Tried to work the curveball in the exact same spot, but that one just didn't break on him. Kate Hunter had one home run in the regular season. Runners will be off on contact with two outs. 1-1 one, one swing and a miss, just threw it by him. And die ball is now ahead. He's thrown 25 pitches in this inning. Hunter, the number nine hitter, it would be projected to send the top of the order up in the bottom of the ninth. One and two the count. They want it outside and that one is way high and outside. Two and two.
Two and two, Kate Hunter waiting a long time for this delivery from Tyler Dieball. The wind up, the pitch, that one, the curveball down and in. Thought about swinging, but really no check at all. Three and two. Another good at bat. Wait for your pitch. But you also have to be in the mindset with two strikes and two down. Don't leave it to chance. There's always the too good to take zone. Yep. Three, two count. Foster drew a 3-2 walk. Can Cade Hunter do that here? The wind up, oh, he stepped off. This inning really has gone forever. This might be a 30 minute inning, if not more. This is. Hey, but if you're the big train, this is exactly again what you wanted. You needed it to get back in this ball game. Three, two count. Outside. Cade Hunter draws another full count walk, and Die Ball is just not hitting the spots. Base is loaded, two outs. And nope. the bottom of the eighth, and Banana Man is up trying to fire up the crowd. And he's peeled. <laughs> he is peeled. <laughs> Nobody working in the big, or rather, <laughs> the T Bolts bullpen. Base is loaded, two down. Gio Diaz. Not on base so far this ball game, something we rarely see out of him. Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League All-Star MVP and the all-time stolen base record holder in this league is Gio Diaz. He's had a couple good at-bats, a couple weaker ones. Base is loaded, two outs. One run ball game, that one is down and away. Good stop by Murray who is trying to keep this game tied. We've already seen a couple wild pitches this inning from Die Ball, and that was delivery number 30 from him. One-0 -oh count. And that one is a check swing he went around. Might have been a strike as well. One and one the count. A lot of the fans for the big train are standing. We're standing too. Oh yeah. Buckle up. One one swing and a line drive right back up the middle. One run scores being waved around third. He's coming to the plate. He will score. Darius Foster comes home. Gio Diaz gets it done. Five four Bethesda. Here come the big train. Choo, choo. Ayo! Gio Diaz gets it done. That's a blown save for Tyler Dieball. Still nobody working in the T-Bolts bullpen. And now a save situation for Chase Lee emerges most likely in the top of the ninth. But the big train can keep adding here in the bottom of the eighth where they have netted five runs in a dramatic comeback. I can't feel my legs. <laughs> Part of it's because we've been standing for so long. First pitch to Christian Chain. He swings and slices this one to left field. This could be trouble diving and not making the play. It got loose away. From the left fielder, one run will score. That'll be a double for Christian Jane. Rogier could not make the play. I was trying to see it. Yeah, it was hard. He just kind of, well, the thing was he smothered it. Yeah, no, no. The, he landed yeah. it, it was under his belly. And again. And now it's 6-4 to four Bethesda. Again, we've seen incredible plays from the outfield of the T-Bolts all game, all series rather. And they needed the gem right there to keep this ball game at just a one-run game, and they're not able to do so. They're going to have a meeting on the mound. No, there's, there's going to be a new pitcher just walking straight out. Oh, okay, he's coming from out of the dugout. Yep. This is Brady Paree. He was listed available. We saw him in game one. And now runners on second and third again. I mean, if you get a single here, then all of a sudden it's eight to four. And against Chase Lee, most likely, that's a grim task. What a ball game. <laughs> What an apps! I mean, you, you have to th you have to remember this was a snooze fest for at least big train fans 
all we the way were, up. We were rather somber. Yeah, all the way up until this eighth inning. I was scrolling through the internet thinking about Michigan football, <laughs> trying to. So are you telling pass me? Are you, are, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. Am I hearing that Alex Drain potentially lost faith? <laughs> oh no. Never. But in all seriousness, this big train yeah. squad has had the potential to pop off all season. I mean, they've shown that all season. They have had the potential to pop off in any inning throughout this series and throughout this postseason, and it just it had to come late in this inning. I mean, they, they really pushed the edge as this one really was coming down to the absolute wire. But again, two of the better players in terms of performance this summer for Bethesda coming up in extraordinary ways this eighth inning. Matt Thomas, who now waits on deck as the, bo as the entire batting order has batted around in this inning, hitting that incredible three-run shot over the center field scoreboard to make it a one-run game. Then incredible at-bats from Drew Ham Well, Drew Hamrock drove a four-pitch walk. Incredible at-bat from Torres. Or he reached on the field of his choice. My apologies. Incredible bat from Foster and Hunter. Yes. Made the bases loaded. Gio Diaz not getting on base all ball game. All ball game. And that's something that I'm sure frustrated him in what is his last game of the summer. He's so accustomed to getting on base and then using his wheels to his advantage. He comes up in a huge way. We mentioned how big that gap was in center field and it rolled through the hole. Now, Christian Jane coming up, and you keep the line moving. The two best hitters, one in the batter's box, next one waiting on deck. They have the potential to blow this game wide open here in the eighth inning. Kobe Cotto now stands in. If he can deliver a single against Brady Perry, it could make it 8-4 to four with two runners in scoring position. First pitch from Perry is high and outside. And again, this was something that we mentioned coming into this ball game. You needed to have a gem out of your starter for Silver Spring, and they got that out of my kit. Kale didn't perform, neither did Die Ball. Paris going to have to perform here in a real squeeze. 1 0 is just on the inside edge for a called strike. 1 and 1. And remember when we thought this ball game was quick? We were two hours into the seventh. It's now yeah. <laughs> the bottom of the eighth, and it's 10 o'clock. We're through three. One, one high and outside, two and one. This w there's been a lot of big train wins and a lot of big train success this season. If they can hold on to this game, this is this is the best one by far. Not just because of the circumstances, but because of how much they have had to crawl back. Yeah. 2-1 coming, swinging a fly ball, foul out of play, 2-2. Two and two. Well, I mean, this is, remember, this isn't the first comeback against the T-Bolts. There was correct. a game in the eighth inning some weeks ago at Silver Spring where the big train rallied and put up nine after trailing 11-6, to six, I believe, at that yep, point. that's correct. To win the game 15-11. to 11. We got Kobe Cotto chance raining through the ballpark. 2-2 two and two count. Paris winds up and delivers a pitch, swing and a blooper into shallow left field, coming on and going to make the play is Corey Rozier. That'll end the inning. So here we go. Top of the ninth inning. Here we come. And we will be back in just a moment. 6-4, big train on top. Welcome back to Shirley Povich Field. It's the top of the ninth inning in the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League Championship game. Game three in a 1-1 series tied. The big train have scored six in the bottom of the eighth to rally from four none down to a head by two, and they hand a two-run advantage to the Viper, and the closer, Chase Lee, entered into this game. Chase Lee closed out last night's game in spectacular fashion with four up, four down. He would love to get the same here, the most dominant pitcher in the league by far with an absurd strikeout rate, almost two per inning in the regular season, but he'll have to go through the teeth of the order who will try to keep the T-Bolts alive. Brady Perry, Tony Gallo, and Lucas Donlin. First pitch rides down the pipe. For those unfamiliar, Chase Lee is a side armor, former club pitcher at Alabama, and a position player who became a pitcher and adopted the sidearm motion. 
dominant in club ball and then promoted to the varsity team. Very strong in the best conference in college baseball in the spring, and now he is here. 0-1 oh, on the way. That one's a little high. 1-1 one and one is really all of his pitches have a lot of movement. Fastball spins quite a bit, and the slider just moves at a rate that most of us have never seen before. Yeah, especially to right, he's diving away. 1-1 one, one coming, swinging a high pop-up out of play. This is Brady Perry at the plate, who was the pitcher to close out that eighth inning. They're going National League style, as he is the, nominally the DH in the game. I love it. 1-2 and two count. Perry will stand back in. We'll see if Chase Lee goes to the slider here. He winds up the pitch, swing and a tapper in front of the plate, and Thomas thought it was fair. The umpire, Snyder, says it was foul, one and two. Well, this is going to be the meat of the order. Perry, Gallo, Donlin due up for Silver Spring. Two-run ball game. That was a huge, huge additional run driven in by Bethesda to give them that cushion, but still, this ball game's far from over. One and two count for Brady Perry. Waiting on deck is Tony Gallo. Chase Lee winds up. The pitch, swing, and a miss. Down goes Brady Perry for strike number one. Strikeout number one and out number one in the inning. That'll bring up Anthony Gallo. By my count, it's righty, righty, righty due up in this inning, and that's big because Chase Lee's slider dives away. Yeah. So if you run it inside, it's a front door, or it's a, yeah, it's a back door slider inside. There's a called strike. There it is. Yep, moves right into the zone. Look. Chase Lee, we don't, you know, we don't throw around MLB talk much in Cal Ripken League ball. Some guys will make it, but if there's one guy who might, it could be Chase Lee. There's a swing and a miss from Anthony Gallo, 0-2. I mean, with the stuff that he is showing in this league against good ball players, and yeah. then the stats that he's putting up in the SEC, man, I can't wait to follow the Chase Lee story going forward. Don't see too many side armors taken early. 0-2 coming, swinging a high fly ball into shallow left field, charging it. It's Hamrock. He stumbles, backing up, and he'll make the play. Two outs. Shout out to the grounds crew here at Shirley Povich Field. The turf monster nearly bit Drew Hamrock, and now two down. Now that'll bring up Lucas Donlin. Donlin stands in. First pitch from Lee is a called strike on the outer edge. Two strikes away, two outs in the inning. 6-4, big train on top. Chase Lee's grandfather is here today. He flew up this morning. We talked to him before the game. That pitch coming. It dives in for a called strike. The slider moves. Oh, into this crowd at Shirley Povich Field on their feet. Oh, into count. Lee winds up, the pitch, swing and a miss! And it's over! The Bethesda Big Train are the 2019 Kyle Ripken Collegiate Baseball League champions. The dog pile right over by the pitcher's mound. And it's the final score, six to four. Big Train on top. They take the series two games to one and win their fourth straight league title it took everything they had six runs in the bottom of the eighth but they got it done what a ball game what an incredible ball game this was everything that you want out of a game three in a best of three series one team looked like they were going to be the clear favorite going into throughout the game rather and then finally Big Train able to pop off in the bottom of the eighth with six runs, and that's all it needed for the Viper to slam the door shut on this Cal Ripken League season. And the Bethesda Big Train now tie a league record for the longest dynasty in this league's history, four consecutive championships here at Shirley Povich Field. And the timeless We Are the Champions by Queen sounds from the Shirley Povich PA as the two teams finally do shake hands and here it, after this game. And it was an incredible series. You have yeah. to give a lot of credit to the T-Bolts. A lot of teams underestimated them throughout the season. They got kind of the short end of the stick in terms of playoff matchups, having to face a very talented D.C. Gray squad in the second round. They were able to sweep them in two games, and the T-Bolts 
not able to come out here after winning game one, nine nothing. They can't hold the big train offense any longer and I mean, lose two consecutive. The T-Bolts held the big train under the season average against the T-Bolts in every single game. The defense was phenomenal all series long. The hitting was quite good. I mean, it just wasn't quite enough. And the big train, obviously, we go back to that eighth inning, the three-run homer from Matt Thomas to make it 4-3. They bring in the closer, have a runner gunned out at the plate. The big train just kept going two Full count walks drawn by Foster and Hunter to load the bases with two outs. And then Gio Diaz, the All-Star Game MVP, delivers the huge two-run game-winning single up the middle. Christian Jane doubled in another run. That made it 6-3. to three. They brought in Chase Lee, and it was over. What an incredible game again. I mean, and what, a, what a call. What a call, buddy. That was, that was awesome. And honestly, again... It was a pleasure this season, my man. It was fantastic. What a season for Bethesda and what a season for this league. I mean, we saw yeah. we, we saw them obviously downsize from 10 to 6 teams. We were wondering how that was going to shape perhaps the parity of this Cal Ripken League. And for the most part, it went very well. I mean, it was, other than the big train at the top and for the most part, the aces at the very bottom, there was a lot of dogfighting in the middle of the standings between the two teams or the three teams rather, four I guess, in the team in the middle of the standings and it came down to the wire as this series is over, big trainer champions once again and what an opportunity for them to do this in front of their home faithful. They're handing out the trophy now down there in front of home plate. All the shirts have been passed out to these Bethesda big train players. It, and it was just an incredible ride and that, you know, that is the sign of a true champion who battle and fight and never give up. They came roaring back in that incredible bottom of the eighth to win this game. Now they hand out the trophy. MVP. We're waiting to see who the MVP will be. Yep. It'll be Matt Thomas. What an incredible, good job. I mean, what an incredible yeah. honor for him to receive a potential MVP in the regular season, and he in, earns MVP, very rightfully so, because it was his home run over the center field wall that got this ball game back yeah. into competitive nature. I mean, it was a it was only a four-run game, but it felt like a blowout throughout the entire ball game for the T-Bolts, and that shot just sparked something in this big train team that we hadn't seen all season. Yeah, and they hand now the trophies all out taking the final photos down there. Owen, the bat boy, is being hoisted up in the background of the photos. And certainly it'll be a fun ride back for a lot of these guys. Keith Torres was supposed to fly back today. Thanks to Sal, had a little switcheroo in the tickets. Yep. He'll get to fly back with a commemorative T-shirt in hand. All these guys will go back to those colleges, and we sure will follow their careers as they move along. Absolutely. And, I mean, again... Thank you all so much for yeah. tuning in every game. We obviously try our best to portray the games to the best of our ability, but it wouldn't be without your all's support that we yeah. have this opportunity to present the game in such a beautiful game to you guys all season. And again, we apologize for the technical difficulties throughout the summer, yeah. but it's all made up thanks to tonight's result. Yeah, and if this is it, then it's been a ride. Absolutely. It's you know, it was, we got here about 10 weeks ago in the sec uh, second to last week of May and ended up really riding out two great months of this summer. This was the only internship I applied for. It was the first one, and it was the one I wanted the most, and it was... You know, it's funny, same here. Yeah, it, and I got it. It was uh, tremendous. It was the one I wanted, and, you know, thanks to all of you for uh, making it worth it and making it up to my expectations to... You know, our writers, Aaron, Devin, and Alex, who we had a lot of fun with in the press box Absolutely. all season. PA guys, Rich, Bob. And Bob. Hope you're listening, Bob, from Scotland. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, all of our other interns who we interacted with. Yeah, the, the op operations interns. Yeah. They, they are the lifeblood of this organization. Yeah. So shout out to them. I mean, there's too many to name. You have Carly, Sarah, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just you can keep going on. Social media folks, Sam. And Rachel as well, Taylor, and of course, 
Big thanks, as always, to Chris and David for giving us this opportunity, and most of all to you, it's been a great ride. Absolutely, man. I couldn't have asked for a better broadcast partner. And, you know, this is always an interesting interesting experiment, right? You have two guys yeah. who have never met each other yeah. before, and you're going to stick them into a box for pretty much every day over a two-month span. And you never know how it's going to work out. But we had one hell of a good season yeah. in this booth. I think we both improved as broadcasters because we're, we're in this for pretty much the same yeah. reason the players are. We come to Summer Ball to hone our craft. They come into Summer Ball to hone theirs. And I think we did a good job. And honestly, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to say this quite frankly, you are the best broadcast partner I've ever had, most chemistry. And that, that really has helped, in my opinion, make this one of the best summers of my life. Yeah, it was, it was a, a lot of fun. So, uh, and of course, you know, thanks to all of you, the listeners who tuned in and who interacted with us. I remember our fast food discussion <laughs> and uh, our uh, discussion about dialects of English got Natu a lot of folks. Natural on, earthquake or yeah, national disasters. Yeah, that got a lot of folks on social media fired up. It's always great to to hear from you guys. We try to make it interesting. Baseball can get a little dull at times, but at the end of the day, it is a beautiful game, and it is our honor to share that game with all of you. And I'll be headed back to Michigan tomorrow and go back to Michigan. You'll be back at Arizona State. If you enjoyed listening to us and happen to be a Michigan Arizona State fan, you can follow us on Twitter and follow our coverage down the line. If this is farewell, then uh, it was an honor to have broadcasted for you and for this great organization. And so with that, the book closes on the 2019 season. Final score here tonight. Big Train 6, T-Bolts 4, they win the Series 2-1. They win the championship, finish the season at 34-8 altogether. With that, one final time from Shirley Povich Field. For Sean Salehi, Alex Drain, it's been a blast, and we'll see you someday.